One of four Big Ten teams without a loss in conference play. Three, two, and one. Two losses by a field goal. Hayden Fry, the winningest coach in Iowa history. He's taken these Hawkeyes to seven straight bowl games. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender, 15th-ranked Michigan, 2-0 and zero in Big Ten play, coming off a very emotional win against Michigan State. This is the second stop in a three-game slate as next week they go against unbeaten Indiana. Bo Beckler told us we beat the best Big Ten defensive team a week ago, and today we face the best passing team. Working with me, the only guy to win a Rose Bowl in the Super Bowl, Dick Vermeil. Hey, I lost the Super Bowl. <laughs> Dick, what about this Iowa passing team. I would assume that Michigan somehow has got to get some heat on Chuck Hartley. Well, you know that Bo Schenbeckler's defense is not the kind of defense that commits a lot of linebackers to get the rush. They're going to have to get the rush from the All-American candidate, Mark Messner, who can sack the quarterback. And he, his crew, they've got to get some pressure on him. On the other hand, Hayden Fry told us he feels this is the best Michigan team since he's been in the league. He said we're going to have to play our best game by far in order to win. But he got a boost. Marv Cook, the all Big Ten tight end, returned a week ago. I'm really interested, Dick, how much he impacts this Iowa team. First off, they claim Marv Cook is the finest tight end that's ever played here. He leads the tight end position in terms of yards gained from that position. But even more than a physical contribution, he makes the mental contribution. He is the leader of the squad. He is the giver to the squad. He is the tempo setter, both offensively and defensively. Bo Schimbeckler is 12-3 and three against Iowa thus far. The dean of Big Ten coaches. Three of the last five games have been decided by a field goal. Kickoff in just a moment. And to 41 countries worldwide. And by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. It's Indian summer here in the state of Iowa. Temperature kickoff time, 75 degrees. A sellout of 67,000 plus for this 40th meeting between Iowa and Michigan. Now to another member of our broadcast team. Let's go to Becky Dixon. Gary asked Bo Schembechler what concerns him most about this game. He'll tell you communication. Michigan likes to audible a lot. Of course, that means being able to hear at the line of scrimmage. But as Bo knows, that's not always easy here at Kinnick Stadium. This is an older facility, limited space on the sidelines. And as you can see behind me, the fans are almost right up next to the playing field. To be successful today, Bo says that this Iowa Hawkeye crowd has to be taken out of the football game. To do that, he's hoping for a strong-willed referee and for his Wolverines to score early. Gary? Thank you, Becky, very much. And that strong-willed referee may be John Nealon. As Michigan won the top, they deferred. They will be kicking off to the Hawkeyes. Michigan in the traveling white. Mike Gillette, who does all the punting as well as the place kicking. You know, if Bo is so concerned about the taking the crowd out of the game early, why wouldn't he take the ball? Huh? You Go don't ahead. like that, do you? Yeah, you I'd... take it. Hey, hey, well, you know, I don't know what his thinking is, but if you want to take the crowd out early, you take the ball, take it down and score, and then they shut up quickly. Mike Saunders is back deep. Peter Marciano joins him for the Hawkeyes. The Hawkeyes 3-2-1, Michigan 3-2. There are four teams in the Big Ten at the start of the day who are without a loss in conference play. Gillette had a big week last week against Michigan State. Kicks off. Saunders, freshman out of Wisconsin, will not bring it up. And at the 20-yard line, the Hawkeyes will set it up. The top-ranked passing team of the Big Ten. And Chuck Hartley is the man who had a brilliant game last week. Hudson, the fullback. Stewart, Balloon, and Harvard are the wideouts. The offensive line now starting to get healthy. Bill Anderson is back at center. Bob Cratch, an outstanding tackle on the left-hand side. You feel, Dick Vermeil, Iowa has a very good game plan. They do. I was able to watch Michigan's play, uh, defense play last week on film on Thursday, Gary. I came out on the practice field to watch Iowa practice, and they're doing some of the things that I would do if I were game planning against Michigan. That doesn't mean it's going to work. You still have to execute. So from the first snap, they'll go to the spread or the shotgun. Hartley back on first down to throw, trying to set up the screen. He's got it off to Hudson, the fullback. He's up to the 24-25 for a gain of five. P.J. Osmond, the nose guard, over to make the stop. Let's look defensively now at Michigan, who is second in the Big Ten in scoring defense. White, Osmond, and Messner, the three-time All-Big Ten pick. Marshall, Grant, the leading tackler. Milligan and Abrams at the linebacker. 
David Arnold, he's the only returning starter from a year ago in that secondary. Trip Welburn, a former wide receiver, now playing strong safety. They give him four on the play. It'll be second and six. Harberts and Watkins now split out left and right, and again, Hartley will go from the shotgun. Looks like he's trying to set a screen to the near side. He does to Hudson. Hudson has a first down across the 35, 40, and a big fullback pounds it out to the 43. John Milligan eventually caught up with him. So two screens and a first down. From the end zone, you're going to notice that Michigan is going zone coverage here on these early downs, just dropping out. Now, that allows the quarterback to lay the screen off in front of him. The offensive lineman working out in front. Now, you'll see right there the off. See Blyman, Greg Davis, number 58, kicking out. Now here he comes. Hudson working back up inside, moving the ball for the first down. What was it they told us? They thought Hudson was going to have a big day. Yes, they thought, and they're counting on him having a big day. First down, 18-yard pickup. That's the 43. Hartley straight back. Pressure coming up the middle from White. Incomplete. Marv Cook, the tight end, in an inside route. Couldn't make the connection. Brett White was the guy who was coming right up the middle and in the face of Chuck Hartley. Well, Brett White is six foot five, so if he puts his hands up here, that puts him well over seven foot tall. Now you'll have to remember that Hartley is a sidearm thrower, and that could be a factor as the game goes on. You'll notice that the Michigan defensive rush will get those hands up and try to th make him throw it over. Sidearm delivery, a little tough. Hartley last week coming on strong in the second half. He had 297 yards passing. Second down, 10. Hartley deep drop. Has time to throw. Beautiful protection. Far side. Catch is made by Cook. You can see why they're glad to have the big tight end back. That was a difficult catch. Bobby Abrams defending on the play as Cook last week had seven catches for 19 yards yards it looks like he's still limping a little bit with that ankle well he's only about 85 percent healthy and when you talk to the people that coach him for example the tight end coach don patterson he says this guy is a throwback to the old style football player he actually ought to be wearing a leather hat no face mask and a crew cut haircut he says he really is a throwback to the old time what did they say he's all man all man third down and five now for the hawkeye Harbert, Watkins, the wideouts, along with Sean Smith. Back to throw, Hartley. Near side, it's Cook again. He's got the first down to the 40. Breaks tackles at 35. Knocked out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Now, you're going to notice right off the bat that the defense here will go ahead and play zone. Now, you'll see the tight end cross here underneath being cleaned by another crossing receiver. Now follow the top left of your screen. Here comes Cook. Here he comes underneath the linebackers. Now he stretches good protection back there. He lays it out in front. Now there's a missed tackle right here at the bottom of your screen. You've got to lock up that big guy. He's a very intense guy. 237 pounds. You've got to get the arms around him. And he's playing at 80 percent. He's better than most guys at 100 percent. Pick up on the play at 26 yards. First down now to the 27 of Michigan. Hartley on the delayed hand off to Stewart. And Stewart in his first carry of the afternoon. Inside the 25, the 22-yard line. Stewart having a very big year for this football team, averaging almost five yards a carry. I'm not really surprised that they're moving the ball this efficiently. You're watching them on the practice field. So you notice they're not throwing the ball very far downfield. They're throwing it in a high percentage zones, the completion. I would look for Michigan now to come up with some kind of change up, a man-to-man -man coverage, some kind of a linebacker blitz or safety blitz. That was the first rushing attempt by the Iowa Hawkeyes. They've been in the airways all the way. Second down now. Hand off to Hudson at fullback to the 15. First down to the 10. He is to the 5 and out of bounds there. First and goal, Iowa. Beta Murray coming over. There is a penalty flag, however. So let's see if this is going to stand. It will not. It's going to be holding against Iowa. So that will negate an 18-yard first by the Waxahachie Texas fullback. You know, they've been throwing the ball real well, Gary. Now they're going to go ahead and run a draw. They're going to set Hudson over here. And they're going to pull the tackle and lead him through as these people set and show pass. Very good design. Now, see, they get people upfield. There's the tackle. There's Baxley. Got the block there. Gives him the nice running lane. He's getting a block downfield by the wide receiver. Almost into the end zone. Penalty negates a very well executed offensive play. So it's back now to the 32 where it'll be... Second down and 15 yards to go. Hudson coming into this ball game needed only 26 yards 
to move to the top 10 in the Iowa all-time rushing list. Hartley this time has Harberts and Sean Smith split out. Notes of him audibly. Hartley straight back on the second and 15. Cook and Cook at the 28 is downed instantly by Veda Murray, who is a sophomore out of Cincinnati. Now here's Marvin Cook in isolation, standing up in a two-point stance as the tight end, again running a crossing pattern under the linebackers. Now you'll have to remember this as the game goes on, Gary. He is Chuck Hartlib's roommate. They live together, and he told Marv told me yesterday. He says, Coach, the one thing I do is keep him happy. In fact, he says I wash the dishes every night. <laughs> <laughs> West Branch, Iowa, by the way, is about nine miles away from Kinnick Stadium, so he's playing virtually in his backyard. Third down, ten now for the Hawkeyes. Complete for Watkins. Watkins goes out of bounds. He'll be short of the first down at the 22. John Milligan again over to make the stop for the Wolverines. Did you see Chuck Hardley throw that ball? He threw that like his, uh, a shortstop making a, a double play move to the second baseman. He threw that sidearm or almost off the hip. Well, it's worked. It's worked very effectively for him, the senior out of Woodstock, Illinois, and they're going to have a field goal attempt coming up. Jeff Skillet will come in as it's still four yards to go on a fourth down. Skillet thus far is 7 of 13. He had three field goals last week. He's three for three within this distance. So Matt, chances are he's going to hit it. Matt Rogers to attempt it or to hold it. And from 39 yards out, Skillet yeah, ball is bearing to the he left. It. And he does not get it. So Skillet, after being so successful last week, did not hit that one well at all. So the initial series does not get Iowa any points on the board. No score. Al, thank you. Next week, Indiana plays in Ann Arbor, and that's homecoming for the Wolverines, a game you'll see here on ABC. So after the miss, 39-yard field goal, Michael Taylor on a quarterback draw tries to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all he gets as Jeff Keppel was there to make the stop. There is Taylor, the quarterback. Ford Bowles having a superb year, a sophomore. McMurtry and Callaway, a lot of problems for Iowa outside. John Vitale is considered by the Michigan staff the finest center in the country. Skrepnik is 6'8", 322 pounds of that offensive tackle spot. Big enough to eat hay, that guy. <laughs> and when he wants to. And strong enough to. <laughs> Second down, 10. Callaway, McMurtry split out. Michael Taylor. The junior quarterback who started every game for the Wolverines. Gets on the delayed handoff. No place to go for Tony Bowles as Dave Haight, who Iowa simply says is the finest defensive lineman of the country, was there. Let's look at that defense of Iowa. Leads the Big Ten in scoring defense. Mott leads the Big Ten in sacks. Keppel, Haight, Johnson, Burke. Very active, a rangy forward wall. Riley and Quas, who's just been superb. And then back deep. Smiley Hank Stoops, whose father passed away this week, playing with a heavy heart in this game, and Gary Clark at the free safety. Third down, 11 yards to go. Callaway goes in motion for the Wolverines. Taylor, pressure. He is going to be dropped. Jim Johnson, Joe Mott were there, and I mean in a hurry. Michigan now will have to punt, and if you remember last week, it was a big play in the victory against Michigan State. Mike Gillette going back, got the sign, the thumbs up. But Bo Schembechler took off and went 40 yards for the touchdown. Of course, it would have, they'd have to go almost 90 yards or 91 yards to score from here. He'll punt it now, but he was very surprised that Michigan State used a 10-man rush on the 40-yard line going in, and that's why he went with this fake punt. Gillette, who's punting as well as place kicking, back from his own end zone, hits it. Peter Marciano was way deep, now waits for the ball to roll to him, comes up and grabs it at the 40, and he's dropped by David Arnold instantaneously. So at the 40, Iowa will have it for the second time, a 52-yard punt by Mike Gillette. year's battle between Iowa and Michigan was played before 105,000 fans in Ann Arbor. 
The Wolverines took a 17-0 lead in the second quarter when Demetrius Brown hit John Colazar with a 35-yard strike. After Iowa got on the board, it was Brown again, this time from 12 yards out to Greg McMurtry, and Michigan was on top 24-7. Then with time running out on the first half, Brown connected with McMurtry on a dramatic 50-yard play. At half, Michigan led 31-10, and the Wolverines went on to win 37-10. So that brings us up to date. Last year's ball game, and here we are with Michigan leading the series 29-7-3. And Iowa's won the last two here. Michigan has won the last two in Ann Arbor. After a 52-yard punt by Gillette, Michigan comes to the, I should say, Iowa comes to the 40-yard line. On that last series, on three snaps, Michigan had a minus 12 yards. So their first series did not materialize well at all. Watkins and Harvard split out. Tony Stewart, Stewart slammed down after maybe a yard game. Mike Teeter now into the nose guard spot. Gary, I'll tell you, in watching Michigan's defense play on film last week, you aren't going to make a living running right at him. Maybe you can get outside and maybe out quick them to the outside, but inside, point of attack tough, maybe cut back on him once in a while, but they're so well disciplined and so fundamentally sound, well coached by Lloyd Carr's defensive staff that they're tough to attack straight ahead. What was it Hayden Price said? They even looked good coming out of the huddle. That's what he told us. Second down still virtually 10 yards to go for Hartley and the Iowa Hawkeyes. No score. Hartley back. Far side. Dropped. Momentarily caught by Stewart. David Arnold with a big hit. He could not hang on. Now you're going to note, Gary, that Tony Stewart, a halfback, is lined up in the fullback position. They run a play-action fake. Quarterback comes up, makes it, and puts him on the fly move behind a post move. Well executed. Got him out there. There he is. Now they're hoping some safety or, or linebacker will try to run him. There he is. Nice throw right on the money. Good protection. He just didn't hold on to it long enough to be a completion. But also good contact made by the defender. I think that was David Key. Six of eight for 64 yards now for Hartley. Third down, 10 from the 40. But he only caught three. But you know, at 35 yards a crack, you don't have to catch many. There's what he did last year against the Wolverines. That was the exact same pattern that the halfback ran on a flat and up. This time it was the tight end. Same pattern in a different formation. Just shows you how tough this guy is. He took a pretty good whack, too, but he was able to hang on. 26-yard gain on the play. First down, just inside the 35. Pitch comes back to Stewart, and Stewart got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Let's go to New York now for an update. Here's Al Troutwick. All right, Gary, last week, Todd Ellis had interception problems. Today, he threw four more as South Carolina loses their first game against Georgia Tech, 34 to nothing. This was 31 nothing at the half. Back to you. Okay. Well, that may set the tone for a big upset on if, Saturday. Huh? If you're not mentally ready to play, you're going to get beat no matter how good you are. Boy, a lot of football to unfold. That's got to set the tone, maybe, and encourage some underdogs. Second down, 10, just inside the 35 of Michigan. Smith and Harvard split out. Hartley has Stewart and Hudson behind him. Pressure coming, gets it off to Cook again. Cook to the 30 and able to advance to the 28-yard line. He'll be four yards short of the first down. Bobby Abrams over to make the stop for the Wolverines. Taking a look at Chuck Hartley's throw. Now watch the close short arm delivery that he has. Now this is a screen pass, but he throws most of the balls this way. Straight drop back, good technique, ball held up, number high, plant sets up. Now he's going to look for the tight end of the screen. Now see the sidearm delivery? He can actually, Gary, throw that a little bit lower. He has many varieties of releases and they're all effective and they get there that was Messner at his feet trying to put the pressure on Hartley third down now still almost five to go Hartley sets up again scrambling around chased by Brent White flushed out of the pocket takes a big hit as he releases the ball the catch is made by Sean Smith at the 24 and I'm telling you as you see Hartley he really took a pop that time. Trip Welburn defending on the play, but Hartley never saw the ball be completed. What was different that time, Gary, is that Lloyd Carr's defense that time went man-to-man. -man. So there were no loose zones there, no one to throw the crossing patterns to. They were all covered one-on-one. -on -one. That forced the quarterback, Hartley, to hang on to the football. That allowed the defensive pressure to get there. 
First down and a lot of courage by Hartley on that play. Hartley last year against Michigan passed for 362 yards and he looks like he's headed for another big afternoon. <laughs> well, he threw for 362 like you said last year, 63% complete. First he's better down. than that right now. Iowa inside the 25. Here is Smith, John Smith, the junior college transfer from El Camino, California. He advances inside the 20 to the 19. And the All-American Mark Mester over to make the tackle, along with Alex Marshall. Very good design. Man in motion. He'll come up and seal. He'll get a kick-out block here. A seat. He's going to step down here like that. He's going to get the quick screen coming out. Very clever design. Now watch. There it is. Now see the seal block right inside. Now here comes the kick-out block by the fullback Hudson. See that little crack he's trying to create there, Gary? Well executed play. Sometimes you can pop that for a big one. I like he that made that little there. crack a big crack yes, with that kind of a block. Yes, he did. Hudson can really run over people. Now we're having the ball move back on first and 15. I never did see a flag on the play, did you? No, I didn't. If they threw it, they picked it up quick. I still didn't see it. Illegal motion. An illegal shift on the play. So it's a procedure call and makes it now first and 15. That's twice now they've had the ball moving and a penalty yep. has slowed down the drive. Maybe stopped it. So at the 29 yard line, first and 15, 558 to go in the first quarter. Hartley falls down. There's a penalty flag as well. Hartley, who's had some problems with a hamstring. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, he played with a brace on the leg, but he finally got rid of it. It was so cumbersome and feels that he's healthy. Most of the time when that happens, Gary, they teach a pedal technique, meaning the quarterback pedals straight back, keep, keep, keeping his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage. Illegal procedure again. What he does, he takes a forward step to start his backward motion, and the center steps on his foot. That happens nine times out of ten. That's what causes the quarterback to fall. In all fairness, Iowa's had such a patched-up situation in that line, too. Oh, they have. Bill Anderson just starting his second game. He missed the first four. David Turner, a redshirt freshman, starting at right guard. Bob Schmidt had been injured. Jim Poynton had been, in it, been injured. Rob Baxley, the 78, the offensive right tackle, a freshman redshirt. He was listed as the four-string tackle start of the year. You know, Oklahoma State was trying to get to the next level. It doesn't look like they made it. No, they need a bigger ladder. <laughs> Second down now. 17 yards to go. Hardly again, the throw. Pressure coming from Messner. Throws it to the man, and he's faced to Hudson at the 30, and Hudson drops it to 27. Trip Welburn up to make the stop for Michigan. And again, Hartley just showing his escape ability. He had some real pressure coming. Able to ad lib, get some additional time. But let, let me say this in regard and credit to the offensive coaching staff at Iowa. That is not always ad lib. He is totally aware where his outlets are. So it's tough to sack him. When he knows he has so much time to, to execute the pattern called, if they run out of time, he knows where to get the ball outlet-wise. Michigan can't get the football. Three plays netted a minus 12 yards earlier. Third and 13 now for the Hawkeyes. Hartley hit as he releases the ball. Caught by Harvard. Harvard has a first and goal. Trip Welburn on the stop. And again, Hartley was hit as he was releasing the football. Pretty good pressure on him. They had some man-to-man -man coverage, but evidently, he got the, the receiver got loose. Now, you see good heat up inside. Good pressure up there. He's going to get the hands up now. See the side end throw. A hit right as he threw the ball. Now, Harvard puts it away. Cuts back up inside and makes the first down inside that 10-yard line. Harvard's one of three walk-ons at a wide receiver spot for Iowa. Their walk-on program has been very effective. First and goal now at the six-yard line. Michigan has had only three snaps. All of it's been Iowa in the first quarter. Here's Hudson, and he may have gotten a yard, giving a yard at best as he's to the five. Messner led the charge defensively, along with Mike Evans. Hudson is so strong. They have talked about Hudson from the standpoint that when he hits you, he is so powerful, he just bends people backwards, those big, strong thighs that he has. He has a tendency to put weight on in the offseason, in between, and also in between spring practice and the fall, and the players have nicknamed him Fat and Nasty because he gets up from his 235-pound category to about the 255-pound category. This time, Hartley on a second and goal, rolling out, has Cook in the end zone, touchdown, Iowa! Mark 
Dare Cook with his first touchdown catch of the year. You're going to notice the action, Gary, to the right, pulled the linebackers over to their right. That opened up that little area that Cook could find. Point after attempt by Skillet is on the way, and Iowa has a 7-0 lead. And Dick, the top of the show, we talked about what a difference Marv Cook makes to this football team. Oh, he really is. Now, see, he blocked down like he was going to go in and get a linebacker, then works in and behind the defender and gets in there for the six-point play. 7-0, Iowa with the lead. 3.40 left to go in the first quarter. Today, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Iowa were, were in conference play without a loss. Iowa with that tie with Michigan State. You saw what Indiana was doing earlier. They are winning. Illinois is winning today. Michigan now trailing 7 to nothing. And, of course, the Rose Bowl will be on ABC January 2nd in Pasadena. Hartley directing that last drive and the five-yard touchdown pass to Marv Cook. What you got to realize when you're talking to Hartley as a quarterback, you're also talking to an all Big Ten academic caliber student. This guy is a fine student, so he can really comprehend everything you can get him as a coach. This will be Tony Bowles for Michigan. He's got a hole, and he's going to get across the 25 to the 27. So Michigan, who has had three snaps in this first quarter, a minus 12 yards, now will have their second opportunity of the game. That last drive was 60 yards, 11 plays, and it took five minutes and 59 seconds. A strictly finesse offense, moving the ball, throwing around, well executed, a lot of audibly. But I'll tell you, you can never, even what time of ball game it is, you can never count Bo's team out of it just because someone's ahead seven to nothing. Bo's been here before. He's been there before. Feeling a lot better this year physically than he did a year ago when we had this game in Ann Arbor. First down now, the line of scrimmage, the 28 yard line. Taylor getting off to the fullback, Leroy Horde, and Horde, who Bo feels has enormous potential. Gets across the 30 to the 31 yard line, a gain of three. It'll bring up second and seven, and Brad Quast, who's the final linebacker as you're going to see in the collegiate ranks, number 35, made the stop. Mark we have Stoops a man shaken up. It's Stoops, I believe. And this has been a tough week for Mark Stoops. His father passing away at the age of 54. Ron, who is an assistant coach at Cardinal Mooney High School in Youngstown, Ohio. He went back for the funeral, as did Hayden Fry. Of course, he had two brothers who were all Big Ten picks here, Bobby and Mike. And now Mark is down, and let's just hope that's nothing too serious. Mark Stoops, the junior out of Youngstown, the starting Strong safety. Well, we have a break in the action. Let's go back to New York. Here's Al. Cook, the fine safety, is injured and can't play today. Boy, it's been a tough year injury-wise for the Hawkeyes. Second down, eight yards to go, just across the 30-yard line. Taylor, wanting to throw. On target to McMurtry. He spins for the first down. He's to the 45. Jim Riley made the stop, and McMurtry so fluid, so smooth. This football team has as fine a set of receivers they've ever had in Colazar and McMurtry and Chris Calloway. Well, McMurtry, you know, they say, as Bo said last night, he's been, it's the most improved maybe receiver he's had. He's, he's, not, he's not a real good move guy, but he has good straightaway speed, and he has super hands. Taylor came in here as the top-ranked quarterback in the Big Ten, completing that pass, 15-yard gain to the 45. 7-0, Iowa. Here is Bowl. Bowl goes for five as he makes it to the 50-yard line. Tony Bowles has had an outstanding year, replacing Jamie Morris, the all-time leading rusher for Michigan. He's been averaging 5.5 per carry, and here is his per game output. Look at 213 yards against Wake, 179 against Wisconsin. He's going to be well over 1,000 yards if he keeps at this pace. That's well, obvious. He could break Jamie Morris's record. Yeah, he'll, at that pace, he will. Colazar, Callaway split out on a second down and five, and Bowles has the first down. He first to the 30, 25 to the 22. Jim Riley, Keaton Smiley eventually caught up with him. And Bowles, who is 6'1", 190, with 4'4 four, four speed. Now watch Big Dean Dingman right here. Watch him pull and get over into the point of attack. Now you're moving a body at 6'3", 280 pounds work up in there. See, that's a pretty good guy to follow through a hole. See him pick that guy off to the left. He has a good block downfield from Colasar. Almost pops this one. 
Good execution in the running game. See, contrasting style. Bo executing of that running game. Iowa, Hayden Fry execution of that passing game. The sophomore bowls, all three tailbacks are sophomores for Michigan. First down now, and all kinds of uh, movement up front. Looks like Tom Doring, the tackle for Michigan, may have fired off. John Michael Vitale over trying to encourage him, so that'll be a penalty <laughs> against Michigan. I think Michael, uh, I think old Vitale could encourage me too. How about talking to him last night? Huh? Boy, is he a swashbuckler. Is he a piece of work? Vitale, number 67, the center. He's an all Big Ten guy. Many people feel the finest center in the country. They've had three previous All-Americans at center at Michigan, and Vitale's as good as any of them. What, Walt Downing, George Leisure? You know what he told me last night? He says, Coach, I'm excited about playing against Haight, even though he's a great player. At least I know where he's going to be. He said, last week we played Michigan State in that different defense. He said, we had to change all our blocking schemes all week and that kind of stuff. He said, this week I know where the enemy is and I can go after him. The enemy. He's emphasized the enemy, too. The enemy. First down, 15. McMurtry and Callaway split out. 7 nothing Iowa. Taylor on a delayed handoff to Bowles. Bounces into trouble, tries to go wide, and he's going nowhere. That's oh, Quas, and now penalty flags thrown. Brad Quas over to make the stop. He's the leading tackler for Iowa, and Iowa's indicating it's against Michigan. This is what Bo did not want to do. See, with a running style attack, where you're chewing up yardage four, five, nine yards at a time, you can't afford to stop yourself and put yourself in the long yard situation with a penalty. And they're actually not penalized very often, the third least penalized team in the Big Ten. Look at that road record. That's amazing. You look at it, 59, 16, and one, playing in enemy territory. I know it, but the nice thing about Bo in Michigan, he's always on the road with the right people. You know, <laughs> that helps. That, that helps. That, you know, I never thought of it that, that way. Who makes you smarter? <laughs> you got to go to war. You better go to war yeah, with the yeah. good guys. Huh? And, and, and a, as be as well coached as Michigan is on a consistent basis, year in and year out, his coaches are with him for a long time. You know, their staff knows each other. They do a great job. Well, they're so fundamentally sound. Right now, fundamentally, they didn't do that right, though, as they have another penalty, and now they have first down and 30 yards to go all the way back out to the 42. It Colazar and McMurtry split to the near side. Taylor needs a big play. 30 yards away for the first down. Sets up the screen to Bowles. Bowles gets a block from Colasar. He is to the 36 and out there. Brian Wise over to make the stop. Well, we saw Mark Stoops come off the field a moment ago. Let's get an injury report from Becky Dixon. Gary, I just talked to Iowa's team doctor, Dr. John Albright. He said that Mark Stoops has severely sprained his knee. He will not return to today's game more than likely. Oh, boy. It's been some weeks for the Stoops family. I cannot express how tough it's been for Stoops to come back after the passing away of his father and then to have the injury. Got to really feel for that guy. Oh, God. Second down now, 24. Colazar and Callaway split out. 7 to nothing, Iowa. A minute, two to go, first quarter. Bowles goes in motion. Taylor looking that way. Up the middle, Colazar can't get to him. Good coverage that time by Merton Hanks. Brings Iowa, up third and 24. Iowa went ahead and committed both their outside defensive end, Mike Burks, number five, and Joe Mott, 97, and got some pressure on him, played man-to-man -man downfield. They're a little more willing to do that because they feel Keaton Smiley, the one corner, and Merton Hanks, the other corner, can play man-to-man -man against these wide receivers. I really hurt for that guy. Oh, so do I. So, as Becky reported, a severely sprained knee will not return. And they've had such an unbelievable year injury-wise. What was it Hayden said? It's been like a blitzkrieg. It has been. You know, and you asked me a while ago if I ever experienced that. I never experienced anything as bad as Hayden has experienced in the injury factor. Third and 24, but uh, right now the official stopping the play and indicating that Michigan's called for a timeout. So Taylor will go to the far sideline to visit with Bo Schimbeckler. Jim Backler's true, kind of self-destructing a little bit. Iowa taking advantage. They lead 7 to nothing. The third highest on the NCAA's all-time top 10 list. Who are the top two? The legendary Bear Bryant of Alabama with 78%, and Penn State's Joe Paterno with 80%. There 
is Mark Stoops. They're taking him into the dressing room. Again, if you just joined us, he has injured the knee, severely sprained knee, will not return. Ryan Wise has replaced him at the strong safety spot. As we come back, Michigan using a timeout. We'll have a third and 24 there at the Iowa 36 yard line, trailing seven to nothing. Iowa defense. You know, when you have a quarterback like Michael Taylor, oh, pretty good third down conversion. Do you see that? <laughs> Iowa has not given up many third down conversions, but when you deep this mission, you think you got to worry about the quarterback draw as much as any other draw. That's Callaway in motion. McMurtry and Colazar split out. Taylor shovels forward to Horde, the fullback, and Horde fighting inside the 30 all the way to the 26 yard line, but they got a long ways to go for the first down. Little shovel pass forward. Ford able to latch onto it. Jim Johnson eventually made the stop for Iowa. Very sh little shovel pass. Now you'll note the quarterback will come, the back will set, and he'll slide back underneath and he'll flip him the ball back. Now that's not a forward pass. That is a lateral, Gary. So if the ball went on the ground, now watch the back. He slides over there. Now watch him slide back in front. He'll follow the offensive lineman, a big 324 pounder, stepping it right there through the hole. Field goal attempt, 43 yards away is Gillette. Gillette He's, is 6 of 11 this year, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. And Michigan is on the scoreboard. So after the two costly penalties, they have to settle for the field goal. But Gillette, the all-time leading scorer for Michigan, the finest field goal kicker in the history of the Michigan Wolverines. You know, how many kids do you see anymore both punting and place kicking? This guy is a rare breed. Well, I tell you why he can do that. He's such a good athlete. He's also a catcher on the baseball team. Yeah. He was a quarterback in high school. And when you run a fake punt of 40 yards, you know you have to have a good athlete back there, or Bo would not have run that a week ago. No question. And, and he must have a real good discipline in kicking style because the field goal kick is the sidewinder where the punt is the straight on. Now, I could see it being easier for the guy that in the old days when the guy did both, he approached the ball straight ahead and kicked it rather than the soccer style kick you know you're using different muscles aren't you yeah it's it's a different it's different altogether a different swing and it's, it's just amazing that he does so well so gillette able to kick one from 43 yards away it's now 7-3 with 10 seconds left in the first quarter you know the other thing about that guy he's the catcher on the university of michigan's baseball well team. they have a lot of players mcmurtry is on that team sean lafontaine hassel rick hassel plays on the team yeah. And as we mentioned, Gillette, Gillette was the catcher for Jim Abbott, the outstanding pitcher for Michigan, who won the Sullivan Award. You know that baseball stuff, don't you? I tell you, Abbott oh. is a great story. Born without about, one arm. Really? Yep. Oh, I, I know that. Okay, yeah. I know that one. But the only thing I know about baseball, say how I can say home baby, and that's about it. <laughs> that's, that's Roger Craig's <laughs> one. I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating that knowledge. <laughs> That'll go out of the back of the end zone. So Gillette kicking with the wind to his back. Puts it into the end zone and from the 20-yard line now, Iowa with a 7-3 lead will set it up. Well, the game plan of Iowa has worked, and you get the feeling that both teams are going to be able to score some points, but can anybody shut each other down? Well, I think the only way you're going to shut down partly is to get pressure on him. To get pressure on him, you're going to have to commit linebackers. To commit linebackers, you're going to have to play some man-to-man -man coverage. It's not a big phase of the Michigan defensive scheme. They don't like to isolate that one-on-one -on -one situations. So I think it's gonna uh, it's gonna be tough to stop them. They might slow them down, but tough to stop them. Aiden Fry said our offense gelled in the second half last week. And it's played well here in quarter number one with 10 seconds remaining in it. Hartley to Hudson. And Hudson has a first down out to the 32. Welburn able to bulldog him down there. And Hudson is having that big afternoon that the Iowa staff anticipated as the first down now to the 32. They stop the clock with the movement of the chains. Five seconds left in this first quarter, and they'll put it back in motion, so we will not get another snap. That brings us to the end of this first quarter from Pennick Stadium, the 40th meeting between these two. And right now, Iowa leads it 7-3. to three. Here at Kennick Stadium, 67,700 on hand for this meeting. We played one quarter, and right now Iowa's got the advantage 7-3. They have a first down at their own 32-yard line. Hartley begins stumbling as he comes out from center. 
Travis Watkins can't hang on at the 45. Let's look now at the first 15 minutes of this game. Iowa, 148 yards in total offense. And you can see no turnovers by either team right now. Penalties sort of cancel each other out. No one has the edge. The edge really right now is the passing yards of Iowa. That's the biggest difference of Michigan from a year ago is they are a plus nine in the turnover department. A year ago at this time, Bo Schembechler's team had suffered 13 interceptions, only two coming into this game. And those were last week. Hayden Fry's club now has a second and 10. Hartley on a little delayed handoff to Stewart, and that fooled nobody. Good reaction by Brent White, a junior. Brent White is quite a story, number 88. They expected him to be a starter a year ago, and he was driving his car, and a lady ran a red light, crashed into his car, and almost destroyed his knee. He's come back from that, and he's a welcome addition. And he comes to University of Michigan as the lineman of the year out of Ohio. No wonder Ohio State's having a hard time winning. They're not taking those guys home. Huh? That's right. Third down, 13 now. Going to be stacked again, and now Michigan starting to put some pressure on Bobby Abrams, a former defensive back, a linebacker, and evidently Bo now finding a way to get to Hartley. Abrams is a converted defensive back, so he has the quickness of a defensive back and the size of a linebacker. And if you go to block him like you would a normal linebacker, you bet you know you won't be accustomed to that kind of quickness coming from that position. Back to punt the football, Mark Adams. This has not been a good area for Iowa. He hits this one. Coltazar is back for the Wolverines. Inside the 30, lets it hit. And Iowa's getting a generous bounce. It's going to go out of bounds at the 21-yard line. So Michigan will have it there. 13.39 to go. First half of play. That was a 54-yard punt by Mark Adams. Of football at the 13-39 mark. 7-3, Iowa with the lead. John Vitale brings him out from the huddle. Taylor will bring out Callaway as the only wide out, the eye formation backfield. Bowles is the running back along with Ward. Callaway in motion. Taylor, that looks like a busted play. It was a broken play. He went the wrong way, and all of a sudden, Joe Mott was in his face, and down he goes, and Mott has another sack as he comes back. Able to down him there. They're going to mark the ball at the 19-yard line. And Mott has been all over the place. He leads the Big Ten in tackles for loss with 13 and also in sacks with five. Senior out of Endicott, New York. This guy uh, is uh, having his best year by far. It's nice to have your best year your senior year. Colazar, Callaway's foot out. Loss of three, second and 13. Bowles goes in motion. Taylor sets up at the 10. Outside and trying to make the catch is Bowles. He could not. Brad Quas defending on the play. Dave Haight, the very fine nose guard, one of the top tacklers. Here he is in a very good matchup, a matchup of all Americans. But you'll notice that Vitale doesn't have to block him one on one. You see that right hand? Oh, you know, I'm not sure that wasn't an illegal head slap. <laughs> I think that is very I'm not illegal. Sure, but I'm not sure he got. If you don't hit the helmet, it's fine. <laughs> I think he got him in the shoulder pad. But you'll see Vitale knows he's going to have help from either guard if he takes one of those gaps in certain kinds of protection. Third and 13 now. McMurtry, Colazar split out. In motion comes Callaway. Backside pressure coming. Taylor in trouble. He gets away from Mott and then help arrive. But Mott was there first. Keppel helped finish him off. Did Joe Mott come catapulted off of that line? Tremendous charge Gary the senior. What you're getting here is not a mismatch in... Uh, size now you're going to get a big offensive tackle here at 320 pounds trying to block a linebacker who's much quicker and the quickness he accelerates right around big scrap neck number 75 here comes Mott to the top see the tackle come out to try to get him not quick enough to get this guy this guy comes with vengeance Oof. he has a mean streak in him and I believe it Gillette back to punt now Dave Weil will snap it movement up front by Iowa Marciano back for the Hawkeyes that's so let's check in. Ball. Marciano on the fly. 35. Boy, he's up there. At the 32-yard line, he is racked up in a hurry. Keith Mitchell was down to make the stop. Iowa with excellent field position. 
on Becky Dixon. You can see the wind, which is blowing as we view it, from right to left. Gillette was kicking into it. It looked like it really held his ball up, knocked it down. It was only a 32-yard punt, and Marciano on the fly returned to 10 yards, and Iowa with a 7-3 lead now has it first down at the Michigan 32. That's an awfully short field, and this is not the kind of football that Bo likes to play. Hardly now, again, changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Smith, corner blitz. Harberts split out, and now timeout. timeout by Harberts. At the top of the field, the wideout turned to the head linesman, and he called the timeout. You know what happened? He had a pass protection called, and he saw a corner blitz coming. David Key at the top here, a cornerback, moved from this position, moved into a position to, to blitz. He knew he did not have anyone to pick him up. Timeout didn't want the sack yardage. I thought it was interesting though, that the wideout called it. Usually it's a quarterback, but it was Harberts at the top who picked it up, and he said, he no, alerted no way no we're going to do that one. <laughs> yeah. By the way, on a somber note, an update on Mark Stoops. He has been taken to the locker room, as you saw a moment ago, and the diagnosis is a torn right knee ligament. Designed especially for AstroTurf. Iowa, on the other hand, or maybe I should say on the other foot, is wearing a sneaker, much like a basketball player would wear. The reason, well, they say you get a better grip on this older, drier turf. By the way, next year, Iowa's going to grab. Gary? You see the size of those oh, shoes? I that that must it. be strep Screpnix, huh? <laughs> I don't know. It'd be 21 AAA or whatever that size is. You notice, though, the black ones? <laughs> Michigan wears those black yeah. shoes, don't they, they? Yeah, they do. It makes them, they don't look as quick wearing those kind of shoes. <laughs> Here we go now. After Iowa used the timeout, they have a first down at the 32. Smith and Watkins split out. Quick pitch to Hudson. And the Burley fullback to the 28-yard line of Michigan. T.J. Osmond, the sophomore out of Pittsburgh, PA, and Theta Murray and Eric Anderson, all three of them over to make the stop. A pickup of four. As Hudson, the guy who bends you backwards again, didn't look like he had a lot of running room, but he made some. Ed Hudson's an interesting story. His mom died when he was in the eighth grade. His dad raised he and five other children with the help of his older sister, Belinda. And here he is getting a football scholarship. Played four years here. The all-time pullback at Iowa. That's a great story. Second down. A long six. Hartley back again. Complete to Stewart. Stewart makes the tackle and he's to the 20. And that'll be enough for a first down for the Hawkeyes as Osmond over to make the stop along with Peter Murray. First down, Iowa. And again, Hartley with that little sidearm action. Almost like a basketball offense right now. They're just kind of dinking around and getting what they give them. He can throw it under your arms as well as over your arms. You know, He reminds me a little bit of Tommy Kramer from Minnesota. Sort of a wheeler and dealer. Not a real strong arm guy. Very intelligent young man, and he can handle all the variables of the offense. Has tremendous understanding of what he's supposed to do with the ball. He has a brother, Jim, who's a freshman this year. First down now at the 20-yard line for the Hawkeyes. Hartley to Hudson. Hudson dancing around, gets the yard to the 19. Michigan really stayed home well on that play. J.J. Grant, their leading tackler, who also calls the defensive signals for the Wolverines, was there to make the stop. A gain of a yard, second and nine. There you, is Grant. You mentioned J.J. Grant. He must be an amazing athlete. He won the Pennsylvania Penn Relay Shot Put Championship at 67 foot three inches and he's on the track team at Michigan this guy must be an athlete got that explosive power explosive power he must be able to whip that blocker pretty good too huh? second down and nine Harvard and Watkins put to the near side Smith also flanked out Hartley back gets it off to Hudson Hudson winds his way to the 15 Welburn and Arnold over to make the stop, and Michigan must feel like they've been on defense this entire first half. See what I mean about awareness? That was not a fluke. He knew where his outlet would be. The only way the outlet would not be there is if they dogged the linebacker, his blocking assignment, and he would have to pick him up. He saw zone coverage. That's his alert. The linebackers have dropped. If I'm in trouble, I'm checking. I'm throwing over to the check down. Third down, five yards to go from the 15-yard line. Seven to three, Iowa. Nine and a half minutes to go in this first half. This is Richard Bass in motion. Give to Stewart. Stewart trying to get away from Grant, but Grant won't let him go. Clever. 
That was clever. They went to the end over formation into the sideline, which in the games prior to this game, they've always been running into the sideline, into the unbalanced line. This time they use a little motion and one away from it. Good defense, good discipline by Michigan. Well, what was it that Bo said? He says, we'll be in a dark fight and I will do something unusual. And Hayden Fry always comes every game of the new wrinkle. So it's fourth down now and Skillet will come in to attempt the field goal. Skillet earlier missing from 39 yards away. Matt Rogers, who is the son of Jimmy Rogers, now the head coach of the Boston Celtics. A whole 32 yard attempt. And this time Skillet's down the middle. So Iowa builds their lead to 10 to 3. 8.43 to go. First half. USC showdown is going to be something they build for it. Right now, let's give you the Honda Scholar Athlete of the Week. Proudly sponsored by Honda, this week's award goes to Tim Jordan, a senior tight end from Indiana. Last week's 41 to 7 victory over Ohio State. Tim had four catches for 53 yards. He's also the holder on all extra points and field goals. And Honda will present a check for $2,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of Indiana University. Jordan's 3.26 GPA is major finance. <laughs> so Skillet made it a 10-3 lead on a 32-yard field goal. That drive starting, of course, after that short punt as Colazar back to receive the kickoff. 8.43 to go, first half. It'll be Colazar if he returns it, but he's not going to. That win really picking the ball up and helping Skillet. And so Michigan, now down by seven, will start it from the 20-yard line. In the years past, Iowa's relied so much on Rob Hartland to be the guy who has won so many games in the kicking department, and Skillet is the man who's inherited that role. That drive, not a long one, because of the 32-yard punt by Gillette, culminating in the 32-yard field goal. From the 20, Michigan. They'll come out now with Uzar, Skripnik at the right-hand side. Vitaly is the center. Kingman and Goring to the left-hand side. Kulazar in motion. Jim Riley, whose dad, Mike, was an All-American, a walk-on, and the first captain as a walk-on since 1981. Hard to pick up that linebacker when you pull an offensive lineman, vacate an area, and then run a linebacker through. That's really tough. This guy has worked so hard coming in as a walk-on from Dubuque, Iowa. He's also the long snapper. 119 tackles in his career, so he knows where the ball carrier is. Some good genes there, right? His dad, a broadcaster, broadcasting this game now. Second down, 12. Taylor. McMurtry tried to change direction. That would have been a great catch had he held on at the 35. Keaton Smiley defending. And Taylor, who Hayden Fry feels is the best combination passer-runner that Bo has ever had. He suffered his first two interceptions of the season last week. And right now, having a little difficulty getting this offense going. I know it, but you have to credit the defense right now. And right now, they're not in a great field position. And the penalty stopped the first two drives. Bo is not the kind of guy that panics. And they'll gradually wear you down running that football and pick up momentum as the ball game goes on. That's why if you're on offense, if you're Iowa, you got to get more points than you have right now. Third down and 12 now for the Wolverine. Bowles goes in motion. Taylor straight back. Pressure coming from Mott. Up the middle. The ball is loose. Michigan has recovered inside the 10, I believe. Let's see. Wait a minute. The ball may have gotten away. Looked like they had it. They're unpiling. Iowa says they've got it. Still waiting on determination. Boy, Mott and Haight came up, and Iowa's recovered. That's Dave Haight, number 64. I saw big Joe Mott, I think again, number 97, coming off the corner, run right over an offensive lineman. I'm not sure, Gary, who the offensive lineman was. Now, here's the ball on the ground. He gets it. He's got it right there. Now, that's Tom Doring that had the football, but not accustomed to hanging on to footballs as an offensive tackle. It's muscled away from him. It looks like the Hawks are underneath it and got it. Iowa has it at the Michigan 9. 
the thing that really started all that was Mott from the backside, and then Haight followed on his heels up the middle. An offensive lineman came out to block him. I'm not sure which offensive lineman it was. He just annihilated the offensive lineman. I don't know if I can pick out the exact offensive lineman on this, but I'm not pretty sure it was Mott coming from right here. And, and an offensive lineman came out from either the tackle position or guard position, not sure, and he ran right over the top of him. Now, see him widen. Here comes Mott again. It's Fake Skrepinek, the young offensive lineman, number 75, at 324 pounds, gets knocked right on his canasta. Well, I mean, he went down. On his what? Canasta. 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 First and goal now to nine. Doring had it, though, it looked yeah. like. And yeah. all those mitts that he has, all everything wired up, his hands taped up, couldn't hang on to it. So at the nine-yard line, a major opportunity now for Iowa with a 10-3 lead. Hudson. Hudson straight ahead, a couple of yards, and that's all. David Hudson, the ball carrier. Rand White, submarining underneath, able to kind of stack that one up. You know, sometimes I have the impression that the offensive coordinator here who does a real nice job, Bill Snyder and Hayden Fry, who calls the plays, they run a running play just to give the receivers a rest. <laughs> you know, they have to say, well, we're trying to balance our offense a little bit. Line of scrimmage just outside the seventh. It'll be second and goal there. Aiden Fry, the psychology major who puts the visitors' dressing room walls in pink, is one of his psychological moves. Drives Bull crazy. Coming after him. Second and goal, and oh. penalty flags are going to stop it. John Milligan was dogging up inside. See, they, right there, they'll the commit themselves and go ahead man to man, Gary, because they don't have much ground to cover, much ground to defend. Legal procedure against Iowa. Hartley not happy about that. Hartley is such a leader on this football team. As you mentioned, he and Cook are roommates. They think alike. He is one of those guys, when he gets the hot hand, he's like one of those streak shooters. He can just absolutely sizzle. And you know, the other thing he does so well is he doesn't throw the interception. Now, here he'll probably throw the one, but his ratio of interception, he throws an interception every 40th pass attempt. And if you want to know how good that is, Chuck Long threw one at like every 24 pass attempts when he's here. So you can see that's very good execution. Mark Mazzari's check in. John Smith back to throw. Near side to the Cook. And Cook knocked out of bounds just short of the five. That was Eric Anderson defending on the play. Cook just comes out, man-to-man -man coverage. You'll see him in the upper stance, 84. Now he releases the outside. Linebacker comes, gives a little stick move to the inside, breaks to the corner, goes out of bounds. So now it's going to be a third and goal just outside the five-yard line. Cook having a big day as anticipated. Cook not only was an all-Big Ten pick, but he's a two-time academic all-Big Ten pick. He has seven catches already for 79 yards. He, as we said at the top of the show, is a factor. And now Hartley's got to use another timeout, so Iowa's expended two. Do you remember the last drive started the 31? This drive starting from the eight after a fumble recovery. And now it's third and goal just outside the five-yard line. Now, I look for him uh, to think touchdown on, on some kind of a pass. This is what they do best. It's, it's a big play right now. You get up going in there at 17 points at halftime, you, you can't relax, but it does give you a little edge. Watkins went yeah, out 14, along with yeah. Smith and Harbert. Three wide out, single running back is Hudson. A delay handoff to Hudson. Hudson! that touchdown from right down here on the field. Just a good delay, draw, trap, showing pass first, and handing back. Quarterback will go back deep, big lineman backs it. Coming here, comes around here, number 63, pulling on that one, Jeff Croston, the tackle position, working right up in there. Touchdown, good element of surprise, good execution. Boy, they really had misdirection on that play. Yes. 16-3 the score, Skillet to attempt the point after. He hit it. It's 17-3 to three now. Hudson scoring from six yards out. Good pull by Rob Baxley, who was the offensive right tackle. Now you'll see Baxley here. He'll, he'll come around and leap. Step to one side. The quarterback will take him the ball and handle the right. And then he'll come back in, getting the blocks downfield here from the slot and wide receiver. Now watch big, here he comes, gets down, see the draw block up inside, he gets the block right there at the point of attack. That allows him 
Hudson, that is, to slight, keep moving to the outside without contact until he gets into the end zone touchdown. So David Hudson capping that short drive after the fumble recovery. Taylor having the ball jarred loose. And now 17-3. That's a three-play drive covering eight yards. And the run, it took only 56 seconds to culminate in that seven-point play. Oh, fat Nat Steele. Hudson, that's his 23rd touchdown run in his career here. So Skillet will kick off. Skillet thus far with a field goal. Forty-six now left to go in this first half of play. Skillet will kick it off, and Colazar will go back along with Bowl. This Iowa team has won the last two games here in Kennick Stadium. They trailed in the series. But today they are on top. Here is Bowles now at the seven. Gets out to the 24-yard line. And so Michigan now trailing. You wonder. You said they don't panic, Dick, that no. they will stay very fundamentally sound. But you wonder if uh, they're going to have to change something. Well, here, yes, yes, they're down 14 points. But I kind of believe his approaches were only two big plays out of it. We get our big plays out of the running game and play action, thinking that they that Iowa cannot stop their sound running game with seven people. They'll bring an eighth man up into the stop their run. When they do that, they'll run play action passes and get the big play. From the 24, Taylor now. Receivers wide left and wide right. McMurtry and Callaway in the game. High formation with Ford and Tony Bowl. This is Bowl. 25, 30, and that's a beginning point as he picks up nine yards. Rad Quast over to make the stop. Tony's very fluid. Did you see how the defender, Mike Burks, number five, had a position on him, and he just slid to the outside, accelerated, and Burks, who's a good football player, couldn't make the play even though he was standing there in space. I tell you, they just reload at that tailback spot. They you reload. Jamie Morris is playing now for the Redskins and go to Tony Bull. Cotazar, Callaway split out. Second down a yard and firing off. Stretnick, Stretnick having a tough afternoon. Let's go to Becky Dixon. Well, Gary, when you think of collegiate wrestling, you just automatically think of the University of Iowa. Nine consecutive NCAA championships under Coach Dan Gable. Coach, what is it that sets Iowa apart in wrestling? Why have you been able to be so successful? Well, it's our state, and it's the Midwest. It's, it's been a tradition that we've had great high school wrestling. We've had generation after generation of good wrestling people just producing other good wrestling people. We've had three major colleges win Division I national championships in the state of Iowa. So it's kind of history, plus our weather and the people are hardworking here and we get after it. All right, Dan, thank you. And best of luck this year. Thank you. Gary. I'll guarantee you they get after it. <laughs> Dan Gable does. At the illegal procedure against Michigan, Bowles on a second and six, able to advance the ball close to the 35 and some pushing and shoving going on. You yeah. know what's happening, Gary, is that Iowa wide receivers are becoming frustrated in that the Michigan wide receivers, I said Iowa wide receivers, I mean defensive backs. The Michigan wide receivers block very well and intensely on every running play. <laughs> and they're going down there even when the play's up inside and getting knocked down and pushed around. And that case, Keaton Spiler, number 44, got a little upset about it. Boy, that's a tradition, though, at Michigan. If you don't block, you do not play you wide receiver. Play, or you don't even get your name in the yearbook, is that's it? That's right, the brochure. <laughs> that and academics, if you don't do well. It is a first down on the run. He needed six and got it. In motion comes Callaway, just short of the 35, the line of scrimmage. Taylor as Dingman blocking ahead of him. Taylor taking off, and also Riley up there. Jim Riley eventually made the stop as he has stopped just short of the 40-yard line. Jim and Riley, Riley is shaken up. McMurtry in this pattern right here is just really a clean-out pattern. They're running a crossing pattern underneath him. Then now he looks like he's open, but was deceiving if there's a defender in front of him, and the quarterback here was rolling out to him. Normally, now McMurtry would turn and become a blocker. I tell you, this Iowa team's been tough. They've given up only one touchdown in 12 quarters coming into this game. 
That's the guy that was shaking up Riley. He's coming he out of the a, football game. A pinch ne uh, nerve problem in his neck. That's what's been his problem all year. Elvin Foster comes in to replace him, and boy, there's just nothing going up the middle this time. Little or nothing developing. Dave Haight was one of the reasons. As Iowa now shut that one down right on top of the 40-yard line. So it comes to a third down, still three yards to go. Callaway comes back into the Michigan lineup. Michigan is a good third down conversion team, but they're attacking a defense that only gives up a third down 30% of the time on, on a conversion. They've only given up four out of 26 the last games coming in here. Taylor on a third and three. And to the near side, was he inbounds? He was. The catch is made by Callaway at the midfield stripe. First down. That shows you that Mike Taylor can throw that football. He had time. It was a five-step drop. Here it is. Quick set. One, two, three, four, five. He sets. He pauses. He gathers. He throws. Mechanically really sound. Gets it right there. Both feet inbound. First down. Only needed one, but he got both. Yep. Galloway, the sophomore out of Chicago, Mount Carmel. He is a fighter in the estimation of Bo Schembechler. He will battle you every way he can. They love him. First down at the 50. Foster remains in at linebacker for Jim Riley. 16 left in the first half. Bowles seeking some running room and got some. There wasn't an awful lot up in front of him. Jeff Keppel, a former nose guard, now a defensive tackle was in there first. Rod Davis is in there in Dave Hates place right now and playing very well. Now Rod Davis is a just a, a freshman, a true freshman, but extremely quick. Second down eight. Davis out of Queens, New York. That's the area that produced the Harmon brothers, Kevin and Ronnie. He's number 54 at the nose tackle spot. Boy, you know this college football, don't you? Holy Mac, where'd you come up with all that stuff? I've been around you a long time. Because you're a lot older than I am. So That's he's... true, a lot older. You'll never know how much older. Second down, eight now. Taylor with time over the middle. Colazar dropped it. If you're going to beat Iowa today, you've got to make those catches, Gary. Polisar is not a guy that normally drops the ball. He averages 24.1 yards of reception. Here he is to the left side of your screen. He's going to come down. It's man-to-man -man coverage. The corner's playing him inside. He gives him a post move. Smiley's driving on him right there. The ball hits him right where it has to be. You've got to make that catch. And he is, catch. he is a guy that's so sure-handed, that's so uncharacteristic of Colasar. The reason he dropped it, he didn't use his hands. He allowed the ball. If you're going to use your pads to catch the football, you draw the ball to your pads with your hands. Maybe he didn't see it real good coming out of the crowd. Third down, eight. Taylor now four of eight for 40 yards. Taylor is getting some good protection, and he does again. McMurtry, he hangs on, and that is a very difficult catch. He has it. It's going to be a first down at the 33 of Iowa. Merton Hanks was draped all over him, and McMurtry made up for that drop a moment ago that Colazar had. Here McMurtry is running what I call a six pattern. That's a deep square and up inside the zone. Here he is at the left side of your screen approaching. Now watch him work underneath the zone right there. Now watch him plant, move back into that big hole right there. Go in there, take that ball, good concentration. Now again, you see what he did, Gary? He reached out for the football and drew it to his body. He's something well done. special. Coming into this game, he had 52 career catches, 15 yard pickup. First down now for 33 him. blitz. Taylor pitches back to Bowles. He's got the corner. 30, 25, 20. First down and then some. Merton Hanks eventually caught up with him, but beautiful execution on the option. 16-yard pickup by Bowles. Safety blitz that time, and that's the one. If you catch a blitz properly, Gary, they brought everybody up inside. Now, as you watch the ball be snapped here, fans, you'll notice black jerseys come from the right of your screen. Here he is. Now, see the jerseys clear up there? See 19, Gary Clark? That's a free safety. He got outside all that pressure. Gets a good block downfield by the wide receiver. Good play. Also, Leroy Horde. And now, Taylor indicating he's having trouble, and he's asked for the official to help him. Too much noise. Now, if we start getting into this noise problem, as there a new rule this year, we'll get into a lengthy explanation. The official calling an official's timeout. Now, what happens is they'll have the official stop. They'll try to come up. 
They will try again to get the ball snapped. If they don't, the third time, the official then will go over and he will start penalizing the home team. And they start taking away timeouts until you run out of timeouts. And then it's a five-yard penalty thereafter. And Iowa only has one timeout left in this first half. Bo is not quite as relaxed right now as he was last night. I think he's oh. starting to get hot. But when Bo's tempo changes, I think his football team tempo changes as well. He controls that tempo as much as anybody. Let's see if he can take the snap <laughs> on the second time. Now, if he won't, the official will talk to the defensive captain of Iowa. He'll also go to the Iowa bench. He will ask the entire defense to try to get quiet. And then the public address announcer will read a statement to try to get the crowd to quiet down. I'd recommend they shut up. You know, the, one of the disadvantages of a game that starts later in the day, the, the tailgate party goes a little longer, too. <laughs> and they come in a little in a better frame of mind in terms of rooting at the wrong times. <laughs> or maybe in their minds the right time. Well, I'm an old farm boy. I don't believe those farmers would do anything like that. Oh, hey, I, I walked through some of those tailgate parties on a little radio interview there. I wanted to stop and have them. <laughs> I like to say, chili cooking out there. And, oh, it's and barbecue's going. Pork chops. Now, here's Taylor again trying to get quiet. He looks back. The officials telling him to go. Now, as he starts to do that, he's still pointing to him to go now. Bo is having a fit. Yep, because I'm going to tell you something. This is not a judgment call. No. You cannot tell him to take the snap. You're supposed to then go warn, and the official... So I wouldn't snap it right there now, young man. Mike Taylor should bring his team back to huddle because pretty quick guys up in the line of scrimmage are starting to say, geez, was the snap count on one, two, or three? Were we running a draw or was it running off tackle? I don't know if Bo is grimacing or smiling on that last shot of him. Gary, I lost the football game on Monday night against my Army Dolphins in this very same situation. Delay a game of against Michigan. Uh -oh. Let's just talk about this a moment. We had Gene Calhoun, the supervisor of officials, and I he don't agree explicitly with that. told us that is not a judgment call. The official cannot make a judgment on how loud it is. No. He has to determine that they can't take the snap. Go ahead and put in effect the sequence that eventually penalizes the home team. I agree. I, I think, personally, John Nealon is making a mistake. Well... And I don't blame Bo for being upset. That's Give right. It to him, Bo, Bo is right. He is absolutely right. It's Unless not a judgment I've call. I completely missed the interpretation. And we had Gene Calhoun up before the game because we anticipated this very thing happening. It's not a judgment call. It's a one, two, three procedure. That's right. You won two, and the third time they take a timeout away. The thing that they tried to do, as Bo is arguing, and let me explain why. Now, he's got a personal foul, a penalty. For unsportsmanlike kind of, but what Bo is arguing is the official cannot, cannot make a judgment on whether the, the crowd, crowd is too out. loud. No, it's up to the quarterback. That's right. He doesn't want it. Because you have audibles. Right. The wide receivers have to hear, yeah. not just the quarterback and the offensive line. This is wrong. Well, I, to me, the, the officiating crew is letting this get out yep. of hand. We've got a whole second half of football to play. It could be a heck of a factor in the second half. Well, Hayden knows he's gotten away with it. Yeah. And that's a 15-yarder. Now, you've got to figure Michigan has blown up marvelous opportunity. They have a first down now and 30 yards to go. Michigan didn't blow it. John Nealon blew it. Well, I know, but I mean, <laughs> they blew. That's a good point. All right. What the situation is, is the quarterback goes to the line of scrimmage. If he cannot air the snap, he turns to the official. Once, twice, and the third time, the official then goes to the home team and starts penalizing him if, in fact, the quarterback determines he can't take the snap. He's back to throw. Taylor, complete. It's Jeff Brown, the tight end, inside the 25 to the 24. But the issue that we have here, without beating it to death, is the fact that the official has no determination as to whether that crowd is too loud or not. If the quarterback determines it, that's enough. And they go on to the next step. That then the third step. That's yep. right. Unless Gene Calhoun is wrong, and I have a lot of confidence in Gene Calhoun. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> Second down now, 17. They get some of it back. 2.15 remaining in the first half. Taylor running the team. The crowd has subsided a little bit. Taylor on the option. He'll cut it to the 20 and drop there. He's still going to be about 12 yards short of the first down. Joe Mott made the stop, and they want a timeout. Bo Schembechler wants a timeout. Gary Moeller, the offensive coordinator, standing alongside the dean of the Big Ten coaches. You know, 
We'll be back with more as Michigan, Gary Bender, Dick Vermeil, and Becky Dixon. We have 152 left in this first half. Michigan with one timeout remaining after just using their second will have the ball at the 20-yard line. Now, the question I have, Dick Vermeil's, if you're as hot as Bo is, how can you even have any reason? I mean, he seemed to call the right play after all of I'll that. I'll tell you, Gary, you become conditioned to the intenseness down there. You get upset, but your mind is still working ahead, even though it doesn't appear to be to an audience that you're watching them on television like that. He knows what he's doing. Third down, 12, Taylor back to throw. McMurtry's got it inside the 10, five, first and goal. You got to give a lot of credit to Michigan. After having a first and 30, they now have a first and goal at the four yard line. Here they go, a little quick slant pattern will come from the left side of your screen, man-to-man -man coverage, putting pressure up inside, nice slant, there it is. He throws it right out in front of him where he has to make it, and Smiley, Keaton Smiley, number 44, misses the tackle and lets him move inside that four-yard line. Boy, you talk about being resourceful. This Michigan team now, evidently that's fired them up more than hurt them. The 15-yard penalty against their coach has really fired this team up. Here's Taylor back to throw. He had to throw that one away. Eric Walker, the closest to the football, but just nothing developed. Stops the clock with 125. It'll be second and goal. Yeah. Tell you, this crowd noise situation becoming more of an issue all the time. Of course, here in Iowa, the stands are so close to the field. The issue we had last year was in the Metrodome when Michigan played Minnesota. That's the reason they changed the rule because of such loud crowds. Second and goal from the four now. That time it was Tracy Williams as they ran from the wishbone and Williams had some difficulty with his footing and that kind of goes along with what Becky Dixon was talking about. Iowa plays with tennis shoes because they have a lot of that problem of slipping on the turf. Boy, good inside linebacker play. Now, you're going to watch the linebacker here, Brad Post, as he's keying right here, follow that, and get into that point of attack. Good shot of linebacker play. Now, here he comes. Now, here he comes. He's going to move it over there, move it up. No, it was 95. Excuse me. It wasn't 35 that made that. First mistake I've made in a year, Gary. <laughs> Jim Riley on the stop. <laughs> now, Michigan has used their final timeout. The Wolverines have expended their third points and the game's not over but take two downs we've got a minute and nine seconds and get it in there running the football now maybe i'm wrong but i wouldn't be surprised this is the 15th play on this drive third and goal at the five and now wait a minute is i want call timeout? Called timeout yeah yep. brad Kloss called timeout so they have no timeouts remaining so both teams now in the will be homecoming for the wolverines and some of you will see ucla arizona UCLA, right second of the country. Dick Comey and Terry Donahue, two former assistants together, going against each other now as head coaches. They made me look pretty smart, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, here's time. <laughs> that's right. Third and goal from the five. Here we go. 17-3 Iowa. I wonder if Dave Haight is hurt. Roderick Davis is still in playing nose tackle. Taylor now changing the play, it looks like, at the line of scrimmage. Both Callaway and McCartley split to the top. Quarterback draw. Taylor diving. Touchdown, Touchdown. Michigan. This is when you have a quarterback, you don't need another guy in the backfield to run your draw. Now watch him go all the way back. Good blocking at the point of attack. Kick out by the fullback. And now he comes right back up. And look at the movement on the line of scrimmage from the offensive line. Very good movement. They took the defense and put him in the end zone. Seems as though the turning point of this game was when they had the 15-yard penalty called on Bo. <laughs> That's why I said he changes the tempo many times of his squad mentally. Right after 10 by Mike Gillette. Ken solemn holds, and now it's back to a seven-point game. 17-10, Iowa. Taking a look at this from the low angle. Now watch, he'll tuck it up, head out like he's going to sprint out. Now he sits, and now he's working right up. Now look at the movement the offensive line gave him at that situation. John Vital, he's in the end zone, number 67. Again, taking a look at the offensive line. Now follow the big horses right here. These three people right here. They're going to let the rush come up to the outside. The fullback's going to block him. He's going to come back and go up underneath. 
Here he goes. Now watch the offensive line as they set. Here they go. They're doubling down. The fullback right there. And Horde, number 33, opens it a hole. A super block right there by Tom Doring, number 73, on Jimmy Johnson, 71. Touchdown. Well executed play. Now, as he was up at the line, did he audible to that, Dick? No, I think that was a, a huddle call all the way. I think that was a huddle call all the way because when uh, Brad Cross of Iowa called timeout, the offense started to go over to Gary Moeller and, and Coach Schambeckler, and they sent him back on the field again. There's the guy you were asking whether Haight was hurt because Roderick Davis has been playing that nose guard or nose tackle like position. Well, he throws such a fit on every snap that maybe they're resting him a little bit for the second half so he can throw more fits. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Quick hit going to be hauled in by Saunders. Max Saunders brings it out to the 20-yard line. 59 seconds left now in this first half. 17-10 the score. Iowa, who's had the lead all the way. They led 7-0, 7-3. 10-3, 17-3, and now you see what it is with 59 seconds to go. All right, now, if you're Hayden Fry, are you satisfied with your uh, seven-point lead and, and get away a little bit from the philosophy, or you could go ahead and try to get a field goal out of the situation and move the ball past him? Well, we'll soon find out. Oh, boy, no guts, no guts. <laughs> from the 20-yard line, Hartley, well, they're going to be pretty conservative. This and it's going to work, too, because Stewart's got a first down. 35-40 to the 41-yard line. Remember now, Iowa has no timeouts. Line of scrimmage, the 41, a 21-yard run that time. 52 seconds. The clock stops as he moves the chain. Hartlett has the play ready and has in the eye formation Hudson along with Stewart. You see the clock in the lower right-hand portion of the screen. That's what's left in the first half. Give to Stewart again. And Stewart is able to jam it out to the 45. T.J. Osmond and Tripp Welburn made the stop. If I was Iowa, I would come right back with that same draw because uh, Michigan is walking their outside linebacker, in this case Bobby e. Abrams, I think it was all the way out on the wide receiver. Now they're moving the other defender all the way out wide in that situation. That's Alex Marshall, and you can, it's easier to run a draw. On second and six now, Hartley, and it's patted down. You can see that low delivery. Yeah, I think that's Mark Mesner getting his hands on the ball. Mesner, according to Bo Schembechler, is the quickest man in a five-yard square of anyone he's ever been around. I know, and you know, when you talk to Mesner, he said, you know, last night, he said, you know, Coach, I've never had a good game against Iowa. I'm overdue. I'm a senior. I've got to have a good game. And here he is. You know, he's majoring in sport medicine. I think that's a good major for a guy that sends guys home hurt all the time. You know? <laughs> We understand that Dave Hay, we're speculating on him as a tender knee. That was the reason he's not playing. Meshner is, though. Third down now, still six. For 13 him, seconds left. Harberts, Watkins split out, and Hartley fumbles the ball. He got on it. Iowa getting the better of it. Total yardage, 189 yards. The penalties, five for 45 for Michigan. The penalties aren't as big a factor as the penalties that in the situations with which they came, a running team getting a penalty, putting you into a long yardage situation can stop a drive. Normally, though, penalties at the end of a football game usually don't determine the winner. Turnovers can kill you. That one turnover can kill you. Still it now kicking off as we begin the second half. Coltazar will let that one go out of the back of the end zone. And so Michigan, who's trailed this entire football game, will start from the 20-yard line. And that wind continues to blow behind Skillet from right to left here at Kennick Stadium. Dial Kennick Stadium, named after the 1939 Heisman Trophy winner. I wonder if Coach Fry talked about the Hawk explosion now. The Hawkeye explosion is the fact that both these teams take great pride, especially Iowa in their third quarter. Iowa's given up only 10 points in the third quarter this year. And he says we go out and throw a Hawkeye explosion, meaning on every snap that first series of downs, we reestablish the tempo of the football game. From the 20-yard line, Michael Taylor will send Colazar in motion. Bowles, Bowles, one, two, three yards. It's been tough to establish that running game. Keppel and Watt combining on the stop. You see Brian Wise still in the ball game. He replaced Mark Stoops, who's out for the football game. And he's a red shirt freshman, Brian is. Smart, and he learns quickly, as the defensive coordinator, Bill Brasher, told us. 
And as you know, Bill Brasher, the defensive coordinator, said, you never are afforded the luxury of making a play without coming off a block when you play against Michigan. They block everybody, they, safeties, uh, cornerbacks, everybody. Body everybody. on body, right? Body on body. Second down, seven now for the Wolverines. Taylor, play action, look out, down he goes, Brad Plus, number 35. Brad Plus getting his first sack on the air, I think Br Brad comes right there. Now you'll note there'll be play action deep in the backfield and he stunts back to his left, gets through the gap. The guard came up to try to pick him up, couldn't do it. Boy, I'll tell you, that's tough on the quarterback because he's looking left. Michael Taylor's looking to the left, right side of the field. He can't see him coming. Good call by the defensive coordinator, Bill Brazier. Makes it third and 12 now for the Wolverines. Brazier coming from Mott. The ball batted up, almost intercepted by Riley. Jim Riley. The pass was intended for Tony Bowles, but what really started all the problems was not this guy, it was Mott again. Joe Mott from the backside. Straight drop back pass. You know, now Michigan doesn't do a lot of that. They get set up, they have good protection. He throws the ball out there. Now Riley, an inside linebacker, working out into the zone. Boy, if that had been a little lower, he'd have picked it off. Riley this year has one interception, so Gillette now will punt inside the five. Marciano goes back, the nephew of Rocky, to field this one. Punting into the wind, too. Gillette had a 32-yarder in the same position earlier in the game, and the ball yeah, not hit well at all. No. At the 40, but it takes a Michigan bounce and goes to the midfield stripe. The guy who snapped the ball up to down it, Dave Weil, will be back. 17-year step to the Rose Bowl. Right now, Iowa getting the better of it, 17-10. You see the time remaining in the third quarter. The Hawkeyes with the ball for the first time in the second half. We understand Dave Hay, who had a tender knee in the first half, is still in the locker room, hasn't come back out. Give to Hudson, and Hudson's going to be stuffed on this play. A loss of a yard as Mark Messner and John Milligan were there. Second down, 11 yards to go. Bill Anderson, the offensive center, has just been back the second ball game, coming off an injury, is down, number 50. He's, he's hobbling there right now. They better get him out. Now, that'll make him move Greg Divis, number 58, who started at left guard into center, I'm pretty sure. Boy, just about the time they thought they were getting healthy up front, Anderson, who, an honorable mention, all Big Ten pick a year ago, is shaken up. Now what happens, though, Greg Divis has his hands all taped up to play guard. Now he's moving to center. He's going to have to get all that tape off his hands. It's been a knee that has kept Anderson out for two games. That he's not as experienced at making all those calls. So Divis now, the senior out of St. Louis at center. Yep, second and 11. Here's Cook again. Cook is alone, isn't he? He is stopped on the near side by Alex Marshall, a freshman who is a redshirt out of Detroit. <laughs> Here's Greg Dippus at center, right in the middle of your screen, now working on the nose tackle there. Mike Teeter, 91, doing a good job. He's getting some help from Point number 67. And Point, when he gets his hands on you, can really do a good job. He bench presses 520 pounds. Well, Pointen's back. He's been hurt as well. Yes, he has. So they have him back in the lineup. Easier to say who isn't hurt up there. Third down, eight now, after that last pass completion of Marv Cook. <laughs> Hartley rolling away from the pressure from Messner, dumps it off to Hudson, and Hudson draws the crowd. He'll be way short of the first down. They converged on him. Mike Teeter, Trip Welburn, is going to bring up a fourth down. So the Wolverines able to shut down the Hawkeyes' first offensive thrust here in the second half. I don't know how the Wolverine players feel, but I'll tell you, those coaches over there in the blue pants and the yellow shirts, they're fired up. This is Kolazar going back for the punt, and Adams to punt it. Punting from a tight formation. He's going to try to kick it for the corner. Hit it very well, and the ball's going to make it into the end zone for the touchback. There is a penalty flag, however, back at the 45. The end zone for the touchback. So we'll determine what that's all about, a legal procedure against Iowa. I'll tell you, I'm not so sure I would refuse the penalty because they're taking a chance with this guy getting it uh, 
That went into the end zone, didn't it? Yeah, it did at the 20-yard line if they refused the penalty. Yeah, he's liable to put it in. He's been uh, pretty good at putting it down inside the 20-yard line. They're listening to you, Coach. Yeah. They do refuse it. Michigan will have the ball. Iowa has the lead. We'll return in a moment. But Becky Dixon has the commissioner, Wayne Duke. Wayne, the ruling on crowd noise, was it correctly interpreted and enforced? Uh, yes, it was, Becky. Had uh, Taylor gone back under the center and then asked John Nettie, the referee, for uh, time, uh, he would have been uh, get into that relief and uh, it would not have been a delay of game penalty. Bo was very concerned about crowd noise coming into this game. Were you and the officials aware of this? Well, this is a very typical Michigan-Iowa uh, game. Uh, we have very much a uh, way of crowd involvement in our Big Ten football, and that's what makes Big Ten football. All right, Wayne, and congratulations on your being honored here in pregame ceremony. Well, thank you, Becky. Right. Gary. Wayne, thank you. Uh, Wayne, a graduate of Iowa. He was honored at halftime, as probably you know. He's been the Big Ten commissioner for 17 years and will be stepping down as we go back to this football game now. First down of the 20. So we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment about Taylor. First down, 10. Give to Bowles. Bowles is able to get five, six yards out to the 26. Riley right? made the stop. So to just further interpret it, and then we'll leave it alone. The reason that Taylor in Michigan did not get relief is that Taylor did not assume the posture underneath the center. As an end result, could not get a stoppage and had to go on and snap the ball. We have a man shaken up for Iowa now, and that is Gary Clark. Boy, they're they're freshman, out of defensive backs. Yeah, freshman who is the starting free safety, and they already lost Stoops at strong safety. They can switch Hanks over to that spot. Or Burton Smiley. Hanks. Smiley can also move to safety, and they'll move James Pitkin into corner. But they're out of defensive backs. If, if Clark, and he appears to be a little hurt seriously. He had an interception in his first start against Michigan State this year. He's out of University City, Missouri, which is right in the St. Louis area. Really been coming on his own, and it's just been an amazing year for this Iowa team as far as injuries are concerned. I'm glad they're getting rid of that AstroTurf. That's right. They're going to go to natural grass here after having this artificial surface for seven years. We'll be back in a moment. Announcing the hard starting safeties have been wheeled off the field. Second down four now for Michigan. 17 10, 10 57 to go in the third. Here is Bowl trying to get wide. Mike off on the near side and he makes it out to the 27 and great ground in the football game now. Brown is a sophomore who played right here in Iowa City and his dad, Larry, was his high school coach. So Brown in now after Clark had to leave. We're gonna come now to a third down and still a couple of yards, three yards to go. This is something, did you see that score? <laughs> Holy Under God. the dome. Yes, you got, you sir. Got going for you. Notre Dame now, what that will do it Michigan will give UCLA a chance now to be ranked number one in the country. That's right. No any mother. Yep. Oklahoma giving the Wildcats problems. Third down, three yards to go. Taylor on the option. That's Quast again. Brad Quast is as good as there is. 6'2", 248. So big. Can run so well. Tyrone Berry came in and got immediate pressure in the quarterback's face and the down line. Here he is now. He's going to come around and get immediate pressure as the quarterback comes down the line. It doesn't give him a chance to go ahead and pitch the option. Now watch it. Here he goes. Here he's coming down. Now watch him come right down the line, right into boom. He can't make that pitch. Then the help from the inside pursuit. Down he goes. Good defensive play. So Gillette again will punt the football. This time about five yards further up the field. On a fourth and five, Marciano back. This one hit a little bit better. The Marciano coming up, got it at the 41. 45, dropped at the 47. Peter Marciano to the 47 yard line. Beta Murray was up to make the stop. Now we have a correction, but it's still Notre Dame on top. It's not 41, but 31. That's still impressive. Remember, Michigan had Miami beaten by what? Had a 16-point lead and lost it in the fourth quarter. A team that can throw the ball like Miami with, with a fine quarterback, Walt, he can put points on the board. But at the Dome, I think we've got a little more than 11 guys who are playing defense. Oh, or I playing think offense. Either way. Huh? Some of the ghosts of the some past. Some of the ghosts of the past. Anyway, Iowa now inherits very good field position, almost at their own 47. 9.58 to go, third quarter, 17-10 Iowa. 
Hartley as Smith and Harvard split out. Goes to the shotgun. Same approach they used to start the game. Here's a screen. It's Hudson. That's the way they started the game, too. Throwing to Hudson. And Hudson to the 45. About a yard short of the first down. Bobby Abrams made the stop. Let's go down to Becky Dixon. Gary, a report on free safety. Gary Clark, I just talked to Dr. John Albright. Clark has a very serious knee injury, possibly a ligament. Right now, he's on the way to the hospital for x-rays. Okay, Becky, you're becoming part of the MASH unit down there. Yeah, nurse, <laughs> nurse Becky Dixon. That's here. right. Second down, a yard to go. Harberts, Watkins split out to the top of the screen. Well, he's running today. Good knee action, Gary. There was a pile right there. He just brought his legs up and took him right over the top. Good blocking at the point of attack by Pointon and Cratch. Bob Cratch, who's had some dehydration problems, has battled back. Number 70. He's one of the fine linemen in this conference. They ran behind him that time for the first down. Audible, audible. Hardly. Play action fake. Nope, he gave it off. Straight ahead. Here's Stewart. Stewart to the 22. First down, Iowa. J.J. Grant got a beautiful ball handling that time by Hartley. What an outstanding fake he carried out. Again, a good eye formation. Eye formation left. Now, you'll see that the offensive tackle here will set. They'll draw a block right here. Lead through with a pullback on the linebacker. Hand it deep. Get the draw play. Successfully run. The quarterback will take it back. Now, the guard's going to work down inside. Turns him up. Now, Hudson goes in. Gets a pickoff block by the tight end. Cook. Nice hold. First down at the 22. Hartley giving the Stewart again. Stewart inside the 20. To the 18-yard line, Grant again made the stop. See, what's happening is Michigan now, is, hey, they know they're playing a passing team. They're getting upfield, or maybe a little bit too much on that running down to run the draws up underneath them. And you give credit to number eight. He is carrying out the fakes beautifully. Two in a, a good, row now to Stewart. Yeah, right. Doing a good job. And Hayden Fry calls the offense himself. There is the head coach. Totally involved in every decision. Second down, five. Line of scrimmage, the 18 of Michigan. And off second man, Hudson. Hudson inside the 15 to the 10. Hudson, all 235 pounds of him, pounding the ball, reaches the 10-yard line, where it'll be first and goal. Very complicated offense. He played execute properly and very well executed. There is Stewart now in his career over 1,000 yards. Remember, he is just a sophomore. They've had some good ones. This may be as good as any of them. Foxhall, New Jersey. Through it again. Picks up two. David Key made the stop. They've really changed this series. With the good faking, the crisscrossing action, they really are freezing those linebackers. Made it tough to pick up the football. Well, they had them pick and pass. Now they're running the football, and they're running deep out of the eye. I, I look for them to throw here, though. Yeah, they go back to that passing attack. Tom Boholsky, the backup quarterback, who they think will be the starter next year on the sideline with Hayden Fry. Second and goal from the eight. Stewart, and now Richard Bass is coming at fullback. The third and goal from there. Brent White led the charge. And Stewart going airborne that time. Yeah, I, I don't quite understand that. I, I just don't believe you can think you can beat Michigan right now with, with a field goal right here. And when you run the ball down there in that situation like that, you're thinking two runs to, to try to score here. Now that puts him in the, this is really long yard situation on third down. There's the numbers for Tony. And third and goal from the five. Watkins goes split out to the top. Two men to the near side. One of them is fast. Harbert is the other. Hartley, hand off to Hudson. Hudson inside the five to the one. It'll be fourth down goal there. Wilbur and White on the tackle. Boy, they threw me for a loop. I thought for sure they'd be throwing the football. Do you go for it here or settle for the field goal? I, uh, yeah. I believe right now they're going for it right now as I said earlier 
I don't think Hayden Fry thinks his defense is going to hold Michigan to 10 points. And I don't think he feels 10 points to win the football game from here on. Well, he's going to think about that because he's called a timeout. So the don't psychology major has called Bo Schembechler's team down by seven. Both fullbacks, Hudson and Fass, are in the backfield now for Iowa. 6.20 to go in the third quarter and a very big play in this football game. Stewart, Hudson, and Bass in the backfield. What you might do here, Gary, is go to the play you have designed to run for your two-point play. A run-pass option type thing. Power eye. Fourth and goal at the one and maybe a quarter mark. Michigan held. The ball may have jarred loose, but either way, Michigan's got it. Stewart was the guy. He is shaken up on the play. Michigan's got the football at the half-yard line. Just a big eye lead play. There was movement in front of the play to try to distract the defense, which it didn't do. Many times it does. You'll see the movement here. They give the ball back here deep. Now, what you've got to be careful of in this situation is that the tailback running and jumping a little early. And the, the point of attack, see, he jumped just a little bit sooner. And see, by raising your center of gravity like that, Gary, many times you're thinking about jumping and not tucking the ball away underneath. Now, let's take another look at this. Now, here he's going to get the ball back deep. Now, he jumps early, and he's not thinking about tucking the ball away. See where that ball is? He's thinking about jumping. That raises his point of exchange fumble. That happens an awful lot. Now, we have Taylor executing the noise situation right. He got under the center, and he gets relief as they now stop everything and they can go back and huddle up that ball did come loose and you made a very good point it was not a well-timed leap but it didn't matter where they came loose because they stopped them anyway right there on a fourth down so again going back to your theory why didn't they kick the field goal maybe they gave Bo too much respect yeah so you can hey i've done it I've done it. I've been against Landry or something. Right, he's a great coach. They have a great team. I better do the, the other thing and, and take a bigger risk, you know? So now let's see what happens. They're backed up into that end zone, right into the corner where the noise is really exact, exaggerated. Now the PA guy trying to get the cooperation of this partisan Iowa crowd will resolve in a charge timeout for the defensive team or possibly a yardage penalty. Well, I think everybody knows the rule now. We've talked about it the entire game, it seems. So now, Iowa, the onus is really on them. They have to keep the crowd quiet, or it could get very costly, because they've got Michigan in a real tough situation. First down at the half-yard line. Now, Taylor needs to get under the center. He takes the center and goes nowhere. Jim Riley made sure of that. I'll tell you this, Bo, with his confidence that he has in Michael Taylor, I wouldn't be surprised to see him throw the ball coming out of him. Let's go back to that fourth down goal. Stewart losing the handle, but again, Dick, you pointed out, he just didn't time this leap very well. Well, and what happens is your concentration goes to the leap and the touchdown rather than the the clean exchange of the ball. There are more fumbles on that play than any other play a running back carries the ball, even in the National Football League. There's Bowles on a second down, slicing outside. Riley again making the stop. We understand Bill Anderson, the center for Hayden Fry's team, will not play the remainder of this game. And he re-injured that knee that had held him out of two previous games. Third down now, still seven to go. The line of scrimmage just outside the four, about on top of the four-yard line. Hey, do you think they would throw it here? Wouldn't be surprise me a bit. They're getting in as, you know, they spread out this time in a slot. McMurtry and Callaway split to the top of the field. Taylor's going to throw from the end zone. McMurtry's got it, and they've got a first down at the 15. They threw it to the right guy. They threw it to Greg Clark. Now, he's totally inexperienced corner. Here's McMurtry coming off catching a pass on his 21st birthday today at the top of your screen there it is 21 years old today I think it's 20 anyway I know it's his birthday now 29 
is a totally inexperienced cornerback. He's been in, he's played, he has one pass interception, one pass defense, but it, you know, he's got to feel a little uncomfortable out there against a McMurtry. That's Greg Brown you're talking about. First down now, just across the 15-yard line. Kovacar, Callaway split out. Michigan with a new life. And out of there, the burst is Bowles, and Bowles across the 30 to the 31. First down, Michigan. Merton Hanks caught up with him. What you're going to see here is a deep handoff off the I formation. Cross blocking at the point of attack. Good cross blocking right there. Picks up Riley 95. Now Bowles comes in and gives Merton Hanks a little move and gets some help. So Tony Bowles now has the Wolverines with a first down at the 31. He has thus far 91 yards on 15 carries. Taylor. The Bowles again and Bowles. Out to the 40, about a yard short of the first down, and Michigan trying to use the impetus of that great goal line stand is moving the ball effectively. Jim Johnson and Dave Haight made the stop. Let me ask you a question, Gary. How many times in your career have you seen a great goal line stand result in a 90-yard yard touchdown dive? I've been in those situations many times. I've seen it executed positively on my side, and I've seen it go against me. It's not an unusual thing. You get that great mental lift. Second down, make it two yards to go for the Wolverine. Brown comes in motion, back to throw. Taylor throwing deep. McMurtry over. Kemp get it. Good defense. Kemp and Smiley was the reason that ball was not completed, number 44. McMurtry has the straightaway speed and the hands to make that catch, but good coverage by Keaton Smiley. Here he is, left-hand side of your screen, see pedaling. He turns and runs. He knows they're going after him. The mistake he is making as a defensive back, Gary, is he looks back at the ball the whole time. Fortunately, right there, that goal actually should have been caught and could have been caught. That ball should have been caught. Smiley, one of two cornerbacks from the Dallas area, playing for this Iowa team. You don't look back until the receiver looks back. See, and he's looking back a little too early. He can't run full speed that way. So it's a third and two now for Michigan. That ball was in the air, 50 yards. Bowles again. Bowles got the first down. Nice cut. He's to the midfield stripe. And all of a sudden now, Bowles is starting to find some running room. Keppel made the stop. All of a sudden, the offensive line is wearing those guys down. They're so big and strong, you can only take them on physically so many snaps before it starts wearing you out. And this, we got three minutes and 40 seconds to go in the third quarter, and it's starting to show. First down at the midfield strike. 3.39 to go, third quarter. Michigan trails by seven points, 17 to 10. McMurtry and Callaway split out. Bowles now 110 yards on the afternoon. He's, gonna, he's audible in there. Bowles again, and Bowles holds to the 42 of Iowa. Pickup of eight, and Jim Johnson made the stop. Now, Haight is in isolation. Here he is, Dave Haight, number 64, right in the middle of the screen. Now, he's being blocked right there by Mike Huzar. See, he's got him up, raised up high right now, and got him turned, and they cut back behind him. They cut back behind him. Now, that play should be made by the backside defensive tackle. In this case, it should have been made by Jimmy Johnson, 71. Huzar did an excellent job. He was a second-team All-Big Ten pick a year ago. Actually, Gator is playing in Johnson's place right now, 96. Second down to Leroy Horde, the fullback. He's across the 35. Protects the football as he goes down at the 33. And Gator, the man you just mentioned, a freshman redshirt out of Marion, Iowa, made Dean the stop. Demon right here gets a real nice block on Demon. Now watch, he's coming off the ball, 78. Comes off real good. Gets in, gets into him, gets him straightened up, gets him turned back to the inside, gets the lead block up to the point of attack. There's the hold. Now, Gator, not a quitter. He got blocked, but he's coming back to get it on the play. We have a man shaken up. It's Brad Quas for Iowa. We'll be back to determine the extent of that injury. Michigan is on the move. At his home. Coming off on Quas right here as he moves here, and his at home and actually gets this knee. Here he comes, sliding off now. See, Quast is moving uh, right to, uh, left to right, and there his foot is planted right there, and the helmet hits him down below the knee. And I don't think that'll be a serious injury. He came off a little bit of help, but looked like, as you said, he could return to this game. First down now at the 33-yard line for Michigan. Boy, do they need him. Pipkins has checked in at a cornerback now for Iowa. James Pipkins. 
Back to throw. Taylor near side. Callaway. And Pipkins is over there to cover. But it's a catch for a first down to the 21-yard line. And Pipkins really had a big cushion that time. Callaway had a lot of room to operate. Callaway, you know, Callaway wants to go into real estate. Well, they gave him enough real estate that time. He's, he got his degree a little early, didn't he? <laughs> right there. He was, Pipkin was 10 yards off an out pattern. He's got to play it just a little tighter. Well, they take Pipkins out after that play. As Brown and Smiley now are the corners. Hanks and uh, Wise are the safeties. First down at the 21. This drive, remember now, started from the one-yard line. Taylor to Bowles. Flag on the play as Bowles is inside the 15 to the 14. Jim Johnson made the stop. This is a juggernaut right now, this offensive line, but it may be stalled here momentarily. It looks like a penalty is going to go against Michigan. Holding. That's about the only thing they've done wrong on this drive, as they have dominated. There's Gary Mullen, our check that. Hayden Fry on the far side, hoping that that is a beginning point to stop this drive that began at the Michigan one-yard line. 151 remaining third quarter. 17-10 Iowa. That was our halftime score. Well, you talk about it, Bo and his team being some fundamentally sound, but with that fundamentally sound is a big, strong, rolling machine. They just come at you, nothing fancy. And they're all young people. They're all back except Vitaly in that offensive line and the tight end, Jeff Brown. First and 20 now after the penalty. Holding. Ford and Bowles in the backfield behind Taylor. This is Bowles. Pigman throws the block. Bowles cuts off of it. Gets inside the 30 to the 28. And Dave Hayde, who's playing with that tender knee, up again to make the stop. Good nose guard play, really, for Dave Hayde to get all the way out there and make that play. Bowles gets through those tight little cracks. It looks like they're going to stop him on the line of scrimmage, and he finds a way to get through. They stopped the clock momentarily because players getting up slowly, and now they put it back into motion. Now they stopped it again. Is it Hate that's hurt? He's bent over number 64. Riley, I think, is the guy that's hurt. Yeah, it's Riley that's coming up. A final. Now that's the same score that Miami beat Michigan, 31 <laughs> to 30. But now what this does is it's really setting up some kind of showdown out on the West Coast. If it continues to go with UCLA unbeaten and USC unbeaten, it could be for the national championship going into a bowl game, you know, on that last game of the season before Thanksgiving. And what network has that? I think it's ABC. All right, second down now, 17 yards to go. Back to throw Taylor. He's in trouble. Gets out of it. Great scrambling effort and stays on his feet inside the 25 to the 24. Now that was a fine piece of effort. You know, you almost have to hold somebody inside your defense with him throwing the ball because he could, if you turn him and flush him up inside and, and the inside rusher is really committed one way or the other, he finds that. He's like a snake working his way through there. Remember now, as we go to the fourth quarter, Michigan will have the wind to their back. So they're driving into the wind with 25 seconds left in this quarter. Doesn't make much difference with those offensive linemen. <laughs> <laughs> Third down, 13. Trying to come Safety back from the holding penalty. The blitz coming. Taylor read it. Throws to Colazar. Touchdown. Touchdown, Michigan. Safety blitz, and they're bringing people up inside, man-to-man -man coverage. There's a safety. There's Merton Hanks, 45, getting up there. One-on-one -on -one coverage right here. And Colazar makes the play, beating Keaton Smiley, number 44. Remember, no help. I started to say, remember when he dropped that one earlier in the game? <laughs> he, he made up for one. That's a big one, yes, sir. 24 yards, touchdown catch, his first catch of the day. <laughs> His second touchdown catch of the season. Gillette's point after is up, and we're all tied at 17. Colazar with the touchdown grab. 
culminating a 99-yard drive. Focusing your attention on number 45. Now, see, that means that everybody is locked up man-to-man. -man. There's no safety. They're three deep man-to-man. -man. Now, Smiley has to cover him all by himself right there, 44. Now, let's take a look at it from the telestrator. Here we go. They'll come back at it. Now, you'll see him creeping up in here. Now, you have one-on-one, one-on-one, one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one right here. Now, now he moves in, Smiley. Smiley is there working to the right side of your screen. Now, Colazar is going to go down, move a little inside wrinkle. The ball's right there. The safety didn't get there quite quick enough. Gave him the inside stick, throws him right there, reaches for the ball, makes the touchdown reception, the 11th one in his career. And this kid, in his career, has averaged the touchdown every fifth reception. Keep throwing him the ball. You know what? He's also, in his career, averaged 24 yards a catch. You know how far that touchdown was? 24 yards? 24 yards. Oh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, his dad, who was a football player at Michigan 1953 and 55, got to be a little pumped right now. Well, that was a great catch. The ball underthrown, and Colazar comes back. And we're all even at 17 now with 12 seconds left in the third quarter. 99-yard drive took six minutes, four seconds, 13 plays. Yeah, and remember, there's no overtime in college football, and there's been some talk in the Big Ten, right? About a tiebreaker. Right. I would be for it. I don't know about Well, that one of the guys was Hayden Fry. As you know, he and Perlis, Perlis. George Perlis, yeah. tied a couple of weeks ago, and they didn't like it. And right now, we're all tied. This will be Saunders bringing it out for Iowa. Oh! Yeah, that's as far as he goes to the 21. So five seconds left now in this third quarter. 17 all our score. As this Michigan team, trailing 17-3 at one stage, has come back to tie it up. There's the driver talking about it again. You go back to Iowa on that fourth down goal at the one. They went for it, didn't get it, and look what happened. The fumble was really insignificant. That's he right. wasn't in the end zone. From the 21 now, receivers wide left, wide right, Hartley back, gives off. This is Stewart. Stewart close to a first down as he crosses the 30 as we come to the end of this third quarter. Trip Welburn made the stop for Michigan. We'll be back. 17 all. ABC's college football will continue after this message and a word from our local station. Iowa has the football. Second down, a yard to go, just across her own 30. Hartley from the shotgun. Mark 45 and out of bounds at the Michigan 40 first down. David Key over defending on the play. Very well executed three-way stretch zone pattern. Very well executed. Tough to cover that kind of pattern if you don't get your hands in the face of the quarterback against his own coverage. Cook looks like he's playing hurt. I know he's not at 100 percent, but he won't kind of hobbles back to the huddle after making great play after great play. I asked him if he had a choice of where he wants to play in the National Football League. He says, Coach, do you really believe I can play in the league? I said, you got to be kidding me. That's how humble he is. He's some player. 29 yards now on the catch. Harberts and Smith the wideout. First down at the 40. Stewart. Stewart inside the 35. Well, we told you about that Miami-Notre Dame game. Let's get the details. Let's go to New York and Al Troutwick. All right, Gary, after Steve Walsh had a fourth down touchdown pass to tie the game with 45 seconds left, here was the two-point attempt to go for the win. Pat Tell knocks the ball down for Notre Dame, preserving the Fighting Irish victory by one. You know what's amazing about that? Florida State went for two against Miami last year, yeah. and that cost them the national championship. Yeah. Second down, four. Hartley. Hudson, the fullback. First down, 25. By to Murray over there to make the stop. And now Iowa has their offense rolling. Okay, Michigan's got to go again and do what they did in the first half to stop that kind of passing, is change up with a man-to-man -man coverage taking away the first thoughts of the quarterback, allowing the rush then to get there and throw in for the minus play. Poynton in the line of scrimmage. Croston, there are two guys that are coming back from injury now on that offensive forward wall for Iowa. It's patched up, it's beaten up, but it's doing the job. Dave Turner, number 61, a redshirt freshman. Second starting call today. Hartley back on the first down delay, and that goes nowhere. There it goes. That's good move by Mark Mesner, number 60. That great quickness. 
Mark Messner came in here with an all-time Michigan record of 55 tackles for a loss, an all-time sack record of 32, and he just keeps building on that mark. You think he'll follow his dad who played at the Detroit Lions and the Pittsburgh Steelers? He's, I tell you, he's not as big as I thought he might be. When well, I'm they list him at 6'3", 244. That may be inflated. He second, is quick. Second down now, 14 yards to go. Hardly drops back into the shotgun. 13-14 left. Good protection. Cook can't get open, and good coverage by J.J. Grant. See what Let's go did. down now to Becky Dixon. All right, thanks, Gary. With me, Mark Stoops, the injured Iowa strong safety. Mark, the doctor said earlier, ligaments. Do you have any further information on your injury? Uh, yes. Well, it is a ligament problem. They're not sure of uh, how, how much it's damaged at this point. Such a tragic week for your family with your father's death. Where are you going right now for strength? Uh, just my family. I have a very close, uh, large family, and uh, I can really rely on them to help me through the bad times and also family and friends. Mark, thank you. Our condolences. Thank you. Gary? Thank you, Becky, and give our best to Mark, will you? Penalty flags going everywhere. Bob Kratz looked to me like he moved on the left side of the offensive line. He doesn't make many mistakes. I visited with him yesterday. He came in. He had glasses on. He looked very collegiate, very academic type playing in the trenches yeah you know and he's by personality he's a very intense kid and sometimes you can almost be too intense you know you're fighting and that's when you break concentration and lift that hand early so the penalty now makes it third down and 19 yards to go so Iowa on the move all of a sudden now starting to mechanically have some problems the mistakes 17 all, 13 all eight to Play go in the game. Man. Deep drop. Hartwig now is going to take off. And he's not going too far because Alex Marshall, number 59, doubling back, made the play. See, what they did is, again, they locked up on some man-to-man. -man. See, Gary took away where he wanted to throw the ball right off the bat. Now, see, he's looking downfield, looking good. He's reading the coverage as he sees, uh-oh, man-to-man. He's Now he's starting to think and run. Now, he's not the scrambling type like Taylor is. He's not that quick. Good play on defense by number 59, Alex Marshall. So now Skillet will try to take the lead. This will be a 51-yard field goal attempt. He can kick it that far. He has it this year. He's 0 for 2, but on the practice field the other day, he was hitting from there. He had 148 last week. The kick on the way by Skillet, and it is not good. Skillet bouncing around in disgust and frustration. Just didn't have enough on it. So it was 12-21. We're still even at 17. Just missing from 51 yards away. The count stays even at 17-0. In 1985, Iowa was ranked number one. Michigan number two. Two seconds to go in the game. Rob Humphrey attempting a 29-yard field goal. And Iowa won it 12-10. We mentioned three of the last five games in this series have been decided by a field goal. But you mentioned just then that the kick was a uh, 29-yard field goal. The average is about 91% good from inside that 30-yard line. When you so get outside the 40, it really changes. Yeah, plus you get to the 50, Gary. The average is only about 38% over five years. And still it wasn't able to make that one. No. So now at the 34, Michigan has the ball. Ford, the fullback. Gets across the 35 to the 36-yard line. A gain of two. Jeff Keppel, number 51, and Mike Burke on the stop. So Bo looking for the perfect play as he now comes to a second and eight. You know what Bo would like to do philosophically is take the ball, go four yards of crack, eat up the clock, put it on the 15-yard line, kick a field goal. Really, I, I believe that would be his uh, approach in the old days. I don't know if he still feels that way right now. Now he's a little more older and mature. <laughs> Mature, not older. <laughs> Second down eight. Taylor straight back. Got time. And McCurtry again seemingly always finding the open spot. Uh, and okay. Hanks depending on a play. First down Michigan. It was a double zone coverage. Now you're going to see here the corner up short, the safety here, safety here, corner up. Play action freezes the linebackers that make it back in there. He works up underneath and comes in that zone. Very well executed play. Now see the corners roll up. Now here he comes. He works underneath. We call that a burst pattern. He bursts inside, rolls inside the zone. No linebackers underneath that. Play action held him. 17 yard pickup to the 47 of Iowa. Taylor 
to Bowl. Bowl first to the outside. Goes out of bounds at the 42. Pick up a couple of yards on the play as Brian Wise and Greg Brown are over there. Bowles makes those kind of cuts look so easy. It almost looks like he's not running full bore. And as Bowles said, he is so fluid. He's deceptively fast. Well, he's 4-4 in the 40, and that is a time that a lot of times uh, isn't played. You always hear about the 4-2, 4-3 guys, but there's not a lot of them. You saw those stats of over 100 yards running. Well, you have a running back that runs for 100 yards in your backfield, you win three out of four games. And, boy, that really holds up for the... Colazar, Callaway split out, second down now, five yards to go. Flag on the play as they stop everything. The handoff was going to bowl. I think Huzar 74 moved a little bit early. Legal procedure. Yeah. Legal procedure. The Michigan team through the years has always had the good offensive lines. As somebody said in the Iowa coaching staff, they all look the same. They just put on different helmets, different numbers, and come at you body on body. And they've been coached by the same person. Do you see that little noise going? Well, they're really doing well. They're undefeated. Huh? What a I surprise. tell you, John Makovic, after losing two non-conference games early in the year, is on a roll. And Michigan State, that's their first win of the year. So now the line of scrimmage at the 47 and second and 10 now for the Wolverines. McMurtry, Colazar split to the top of the field. Taylor straight back. Hate comes up the middle and buries him in the ball up and incomplete. Hate just buried Taylor. That's Actually, he wasn't throwing the ball to Bowles there. He was throwing a delay pattern. Now, you'll see Hate to the left side of your screen working on Dingman. He beats him to the inside. Vitaly, number 67, tries to pick him up there and give him help, but no help. See, he was not really throwing that ball to Bowles. He was throwing that ball to McMurtry coming in on the delay. He was throwing the ball, not seeing anybody because That's right. of hate. Big old hate was in his face. Foster had a crack at the interception. Third down, 10. Taylor with a top-rated efficiency in the Big Ten at quarterback. Back to throw a flag on the play. And coming back, Colazar makes the catch. But let's see what the penalty flag's all about. That would be a first down if it stands. I think it's on Michigan. Colazar does a good job. Doesn't he coming back on the short yeah, passes? I'll tell you, Taylor is really throwing the ball well. I see why he's throwing 64% complete coming into this game. That's going to negate a 13-yard completion, the penalty. Illegal procedure. Taylor's taking over quarterback after Demetrius Brown a year ago was the starter. In fact, Brown had a superb day against Iowa last year in Ann Arbor. Is Taylor a senior? He's a junior. He's got a junior, yes. I mean, guy can throw that well. Uh, how come it took so long to find him? <laughs> well, you know, Demetrius Brown played so well. His biggest problem was that he was having too many interceptions. He threw seven against Michigan State last year. He ended up losing his starting job to Taylor at the Hall of Fame Bowl. Now, what's this all about? Talking to the clock operator, maybe? No, he's just checking the, his flight information for his flight home. It's tough to get out of here, you know? <laughs> After 4 o'clock, he can't take off. <laughs> it's a dead ball. Foul. The play did not stand. We will repeat the down. Still third down, right? That's it. Bo doesn't mind. So we repeat the down. It would have been a first down, of course, had it all stayed together. But now it's third down. Back to throw is Taylor. And the big tight end, Walker, the intended receiver. Derek Walker can't get to it. And Michigan has run out of down. What they were hoping for is a two-deep zone coverage. You'll see the tight end now, Derek Walker, moving left to right in motion. Play action fake. They wanted to get him down the hole. Now, Iowa did not go too deep zone. This ball, actually, the free safety should pick that one off. Now, remember, Gary Clark, number 19, the free safety that was playing in the game, is injured and not playing, but I kind of believe that ball should have been picked off thrown down. Not here. only that, but Stoops is out as well. Both safeties are out. Gillette to punt from inside the 35-yard line. Marciano back deep. He hits it high. Marciano, who doesn't like to call for the fair catch, does. He disdains the fair catch, but he did at that time. And at the 13-yard line, Iowa, after a 40-yard punt, has the football. 
This is a machine designed to keep you on time. 17, you see the time remaining. Iowa now has the football. They have marked it at the Iowa 14. Michigan trailing at one time 17 to 3. Tied it up with 12 seconds to go in the third. And now 10.37 left to decide the issue. Hartley one single running back is Hudson, and he gets to Hudson, and Hudson takes some punishment. Yeah, I don't know why they run that play. They haven't made it. They, I don't think they made an inch yet in the ball game trying to run that counter. But no. one time they did. One time they made some errors. Let me bring up something. You said something during a break a while ago. You watched the practice. You feel that Iowa is saving an awful lot offensively. Well, they have things in the game plan that they haven't used yet. Now, that doesn't mean they're saving it, but I know they haven't used it. <laughs> Loss on the play, second down 11 as Watkins comes out of the ball game. Harberts has checked in. He'll come foot to the near side. Sean Smith to the top of the field. He's audibly, yep, and from the shotgun. On a second and 11. Hartley in some real trouble, gets rid of it. Sean Smith with the catch, first down Iowa. Let's go to Becky Dixon. Thanks, Gary, with me, Rob. What was going through your mind? Well, I was just just hit it straight, hit it smooth. You know, I prayed to the Lord, just give me strength and direction, and uh, you know, I hit it through. What advice would you give Skillet out there today on handling this kind of pressure? It could come down to a field goal in this game. Yeah, it really could, and it's gonna, and Jeff's gonna hit it. What I tell him is, relax, trust God with it, and it'll go through. All right, Rob, thank you, Gary. All right. The only thing is the defense is praying too. Remember that. That's right. <laughs> First down after that completion, after the 29-yard line, Stewart, Stewart going no place. Hartley, by the way, now, get the numbers on this, Mr. Vermeil. Hartley is 21 of 26, 218 yards. Yeah, he's done an excellent job. The game plan has been super, and it, it's still a 17-17 tie, but the, he has done a good job. He gets on those kind of rolls, yes, and he, does. he just seems to be unstoppable, and he's on it now. He's healthy. It makes a big difference. He was playing hurt when we saw him a couple of weeks ago. And Michigan's done a good job of switching up the coverage. Just when he's confident he knows everything is coming off, uh, they change it up, and that's why he's been audibling a little bit in this series. Second and nine from the shotgun. Over the middle, and this is Watkins, Travis Watkins who had 22 catches coming into this game, has dropped at the 37, and now some uh, pushing going on. Mitchell is in on that I don't think Michigan. It, yeah, I don't think you'll see Bo's team uh, commit the roughing foul or something like that in this situation. Too disciplined to make that kind of a mistake. There's the guy that uh, Houtman was talking about. He says he'll hit it if he gets another crack at him. Skillet may have a chance to get in the skillet. <laughs> Boy, in the frying pan anyway. The frying huh? pan anyway. He's a redshirt freshman out of Silvis, Illinois. That's the East Moline Quad City area. Third down now, two yards to go. Missouri in at a wide receiver spot. Hartley throwing and it took it. It broken up and that was Trip Welburn. Welburn is out of Greensboro, North Carolina, one of the most heavily recruited players in the country his senior year. And last year was a wide receiver for Bo Beckler. He thinks he's going to be a great safety before it's all over. Sullivan Anthony Wilborn. I wonder how he got the name Trip. I think, I think it's Sullivan and Anthony the third. That's yeah. where they got the trip, probably. Yeah. Adams back to punt inside the 25, and he hit it high, but not very deep. Coming up, Colazar, and they almost interfered with it. He makes the fair catch at the Michigan 36, 27-yard punt. 17 all from Kinnick Stadium. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Chevrolet announces more Americans going back to work. Chicken team, and well, that's, uh, is that in vogue or not? I'm not sure I know. Is that a hair or a hat? <laughs> well, there's a lot of them. Oh, there. I see. There was a fire sale or whatever it is. Anyway, 76 to go in this game. 17 all. Michigan has the ball. First down at their own 36. 27-yard punt that time by Adam. I tally to snap the ball to Michael Taylor. Receivers wide left and right. Fourth 
the fullback. And Leroy Horde out of New Orleans crosses the 40. He'll advance to the 42-yard line. Jim Johnson made the stop. Horde has been a very solid player and in time will impact this program more and more. They have great confidence in him. Second down, four, gain of six. Brown has come out of the ball game now at cornerback. James Hipkins has checked in for the Hawkeyes, number four. He'll pick up Colasar, who's split to the top of the field. Taylor, the ball, ball, taking that little slice of daylight, crosses the 45 to the 47. Dave Haight made the stop. You, you see what Michigan's doing. That's a first down. What Michigan is doing and at that time is go to two tight ends. Iowa's been overshifting the defense toward the tight end. Now they have two. It leaves a big bubble, a big hole over on the weak side, and uh, they're going to attack there. Let's see if they stay with that approach. Two veteran they coaches. They it out already. Two veteran coaches, Hayden Fry and Bo Schembechler. Oh, they're, back, they're back to wide receivers now. First down now to 47. Taylor to Horde. Horde protecting the ball. First across the 45. Close to another first down at the 43 of Iowa. Merton Hanks eventually caught up with him. They're spotting to see if he got the first down. And as they look to the far side, they're going to measure. You'll see Horde now crossing the formation here. Got a lead block here. Now, it's normally hard to run to the weak side of a formation coming in here like this with no tight end, but they do a good job. He breaks the tackle there. He has good balance, and you can see why they say that Hort has enormous potential, but for Bo, in his thinking, he's a little too happy-go-lucky. He doesn't quite take the practices serious enough. I'm not so sure he thinks he takes the classroom serious enough. That's why he's not in the, the press guide. No information on it. That's right. If you don't do well academically, what Bo does, he doesn't let you yeah, have your he, picture or your resume in a press guide. He says he can't count on you. Right. And he won't put your picture in there until he can count on you. He has ways of getting your attention. Tremendous discipline. That was the first down. The measurement indicating that at the 42. McMurtry and Callaway split out. Six and a half minutes to go. Bowls again. Bowls for a yard, and that's all. Mike Burke out of Davenport, Iowa, senior, who, along with Mott, really gives them outside play that's been effective all year long. I kind of believe right now that Michigan is running a check with me offense. They call it play maybe in two directions, get up the line of scrimmage, see the overshift of the defense, and run away from the strength of it, because Bo's whole philosophy is run where you ain't. <laughs> that's all there is to it. He's going to run away from you. Just in case, number 19, warming up. From the 42, no gain on that last play. Second down, 10. Horde again, and Horde inside the 40 to the 38. Burke on the stop. So it's a third down coming up. Jeff Keppel made the stop. Take this opportunity to remind you that near the conclusion of this game, we'll be participating in an 18-year tradition. Selecting a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each of the teams. And Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship in each player's name to each school to further assist qualified students in the pursuit of excellence in all chosen fields. We've got some outstanding candidates for that award today. Good choices. Third and six. Big play right here. Five minutes and 15 seconds. Audible. Taylor back. It's going to be the tight end, Jeff Brown, who made the catch, and it will be a first down. Don't throw that much to him. That's no. only his seventh catch of the season, but it's a big one. Here he is coming off the line of scrimmage. Here he is down here. Now he's going to straight drop back past good cut protection. He's going to come down and work back into the inside. There's a slot formation up to the top. Here he is coming back now. They're working to the inside. He sticks the linebacker there. Good setup. Good technique by the quarterback, Taylor. First down. He has been a starter three years for Michigan. Oh, Here's a hand to Hord, and that is snuffed out in a hurry. Burke is there. Wiley is there. Wiley makes that play. Yep. 
Loss on the play of a couple of yards. Second down, 12. Riley, you remember, came out of the game earlier with an injury, but you knew he wouldn't be out of there very long. Uh, he's one of those guys they label an overachiever. Yep. But you know, that, that I think that's a heck of a compliment. Well, you made a comment about overachievers, uh, their attitudes, the walk-ons. The, the guys with the superior attitudes are always achievers, not necessarily SC beat Washington, 28-27. Boy, that UCLA-USC showdown is getting closer. Second down, 12 now. Taylor falls down. Well, that was the plight of Hartley earlier in the ball game, having trouble backpedaling. And Taylor looked like he and Vitaly, the center, may have gotten tangled up. That happens. How many times has it happened to Hartley? Before? Take a look at the feet right here, and let's see if he doesn't step forward with his right foot. Let's see it. It's right foot let's see what no oh, it's it? the left guard here it is it's big Pulsar came over and stepped on him <laughs> well i'll tell you how'd you like to have 287 pounds step on your right foot that's right who's are and now it's a third and 16. they're going backwards and now taylor can't hear so they will stop it now you know taylor really understands it now that he gets under the center and being absolutely sure that he correctly does what he has to do to get the official to stop the clock. Now, Iowa's called a timeout. No, they haven't called a timeout. Well, they pointed towards Iowa. Anyway, we'll be back. We'll sort it out with 3.32 to go in the game. Be third and 16 when we come back. had such a controversy concerning the noise trying to control the crowd what happens is is each time you go under center and you have to warn the defense of the home crowd it's accumulative and so as an end result when Taylor couldn't make the snap again they automatically assess Iowa a timeout now they have one left now if they do this again Iowa then will lose their last timeout and it could be a five yeah. yard penalty thereafter well I tell you that is a very tough rule to follow isn't it Dead. Third and 16. Now the crowd is, the crowd is dead quiet now. They got their attention. Taylor back to throw. Near side. McMurtry back to the ball. Makes the catch at the 20. And he's got a first down. McMurtry made a tough catch and then, with second effort, got the needed yardage for the first down. Now you're going to see McMurtry getting single coverage here. Here he is to the right screen. Coming off number one. He pushes deep. All right, Smiley plants and drives, does a real nice job, does everything he has to do, but the ball is thrown right where it has to be thrown. He breaks the tackle, spins around, gets the extra yardage. They needed 16 yards, and he got 17, just because of the effort of McMurtry to get inside the 20. And coming back for the ball. If he hadn't have come back for the ball, he'd have, bat he'd have been bat batted away by Smiley. That first, was good defense. First down, 19-yard line, Michigan. 3.03 to go in the game. Bowles protects the ball as he gets to the 16-yard line. A gain of three. It'll bring up second down. That was Burke on the stop. McMurtry and Colazar do such a great job of coming back to the ball. I mean, they read it and they fly to the football. Well, that's a principle that is coached. It's actually a principle that was initiated in football, really, and made famous, I think, by Sid Gilman. The old comeback theory. Then went into San Diego Chargers, to the Oakland Raiders, and on into college football. A lot of people used to run the out and just break out and look over the outside shoulder and you take him to the sideline with the ball. But with a comeback, especially the short side of the field, you normally will catch it inbounds. Second down, seven now from the 17 of Iowa. Audible, audible. Taylor to Bowles. Bowles on his feet to the 10. Five, three. First and goal, Michigan. Again, that was the two tight end offense, see, and he's checking, and he's going away from the strength of the defense. Here, we'll take a look at this from the low. That's about as low hang as you can get. Here he is. He hands it to him. Now, Steve, that's that big Dingman number 78 leading him through the hole. And you can see how powerful this young man is, Bulls. Is. You've really got to get your pads into him. I tell you, you can see how powerful this entire Michigan team is. They are just wearing, wearing them down, down aren't they? They wear you down. First and goal from the three. They go to the wishbone here, and they like to normally start out by giving the ball to Horde up inside. Tracy Williams is in that. This is Williams with the ball. Williams driving for the goal line, and he's going to be nigh the goal line about an inch or two. So it'll be second and goal there. Boy, he was trying to shove that pile across the goal line, wasn't he? Yes, he was. 
You see the time. That's the other thing. Is when they do get this in, there's not going to be a lot of time for Iowa to retaliate. Well, remember when we did the Michigan State Iowa game, they came back within, I don't know, just seconds to give the opportunity for Skelet to kick the field goal. Iowa might try to stop that clock, but they only have one timeout remaining right. after being assessed that one. There's the time. 133, second and goal. From the wishbone. Williams again. Williams is denied again. Melvin Porter, they're saying there's a fumble, and Iowa got it. take it in the first time just stopped short this time the ball is jarred loose and we'll try to sort it out here it is now it's an off tackle play kick out lead off here come up off tackle follow jefferson number 20 uh, yeah jefferson no it's tracy here it is 36 tracy good penetration right there by foster 66 it strips him from the football and you know Gary, the other point is that tracy williams hasn't been playing in the football game the whole game well they carried it back to back yeah and now, Iowa, with one timeout left, has it at the one-yard line with 1.21 left. A disappointed Michael Taylor. Hudson tries to get some operating room, brings it out close to the five. My point being in the defense of Tracy Williams, no excuse for fumbling the football, but if you haven't been in the flow of the game and all of a sudden you're carrying the ball in the most important play of the game, I don't know, you know? <laughs> Put the ball in a guy's hands who's been carrying it the whole game. The guy that got you there. Yeah. Of course he didn't he yeah. michigan calls a timeout they have two remaining 113 to go it's all even at 17. we're not a company but he's going to leap in the air and he's throwing his left hand up in the air he's only got the ball in one hand right down there and you protect the ball going into that area with your life not with just one arm that was mott that came up with a fumble but what an effort by Foster. He looked oh. like he was shot out of a gun he the way he came across there. there. And that's what you got to expect as people coming from every direction. Yep. But you had an interesting thought about Williams carrying the ball. Yeah, I, I just always believe in those situations, you don't worry about what play you ball. You just give the ball to your best football player. Hardly now giving off again to Stewart. And Stewart out to the six. Now Michigan, they're pointing the other way. But the ball is still in the possession of Iowa. Bobby Abrams is there. The time, you see, one minute. Michigan has two timeouts left, and now they're going to use another one. So they will have one timeout. They stop the clock, 58 seconds. Hartley will come to the near side. 58 seconds left in this 40th meeting. Thus far, it's all even. Listen to the heartbeat. Call Iowa on a fourth and goal at the one-yard line was stopped by Michigan. Michigan was headed in. They had it at the one-yard line. They fumbled it. And we're still leaving at 17-all, as now both teams with one timeout remaining. Third and five for Iowa at their six-yard line. And you wonder, but Hartley, as he came to the near sideline, had to say to Hayden Fry and vice versa. Well, here they're going to go to three receivers and split out. Watkins puts in the near side. The shot hit. Hartley throwing far side. Catch made. First down out of bounds is Devin Harvard. All right, now they have enough room really to open it up a little bit, and they are very good in a two-minute drill as we saw them against Michigan State just quickly hit the scene pass deep to kick the field goal and miss. <laughs> but the only problem is they only have 54 seconds. You can't hey. run your two-minute offense in 54 seconds. Oh, yeah, seconds. same principles apply. <laughs> I sure I'm just they had you. less than that against Michigan State. <laughs> Here we How go. How about your 54-second out Yeah, all right. Three wide outs again. From the shotgun, Hartley. Can't find anybody. Chad right gets it to Harbors again. Well, they're not going to get it done that way. Gets out of bounds to about the 19-yard line. Didn't pick up, but about four yards. Marshall defending on the play. Does stop the clock with 47 seconds. And we have a flag now on the far side of the field. Michigan did a real nice job of collapsing the zones inside. Oh, what's that? I didn't see any penalty. Did you? down as 
it's a personal foul, but let's just wait and see. Personal foul on the offense. It'll be second down. I must have happened on the sideline on the far side. I sure didn't see it. Of course, that's a long ways away from here. There was an official right there. Oh, I think what happened, what they say in the truck, take a look at the left-hand corner of your screen. I think the receiver threw the ball at the defender. Oh, my gosh. That is a ridiculous. I can't believe it. I don't know. It's not been a good day in some ways for the guys so. in the zebra stripes. There's a handoff now and out to the 10-yard line is Stewart. I can't help it, Gary. A coaching experience comes out when I see something like that. Stewart is hurt. Tony Stewart is hurt. That'll stop the clock with 36 seconds. I think he has his wind knocked out of him. Stewart uh, might have landed on the football that time. But anyway, here's the situation now. We have 36 seconds. It was third and 14. One timeout for both clubs, 17 all, and Iowa is in danger of ending up with their second tie of the conference season. They tied two weeks ago against Michigan State. Next week, Michigan would go against Indiana, who is unbeaten in not only non-conference play, but as well in the Big Ten Conference week game when they play at Purdue. He, this kid Stewart has played a heck of a football game today. Speaking of a heck of a job, Bill Friel, along with uh, George Hill, our statistician and spotter. Joel Feld, our producer, and Jim Jeanette, our director. Back to throw, Hartley, near side. Travis Watkins stays on his feet, gets out of bounds, stops the clock, first down. They're still alive at the 29-yard line. Big completion by the Hawkeyes. Stops the clock with 26 seconds to go. Michigan is doing a good job of sealing off the stuff he wants to throw down the hole, forcing that long. That's a long throw out there to the out pattern. And normally you try to funnel them back in there, even those out patterns back in so they can't get out of bounds. But they can't cover everything. They needed 16 yards. They got 19. At the 29, Iowa still trying somehow to pull this one out. Throws it over the middle of the field. Hudson catches the ball to the 35. Got to use, time out, got to use their final timeout, I believe, and will. Trip Welburn made the stop, a gain of five, six yards on the play. The other day, they worked on the practice field in their kicking period, Gary, this very situation. Needing a field goal to win or to tie, no timeouts left, no hardly seconds left. They run a play, and they had the field goal team just running on the field lineup and kicking. They can do it, but they need a big play downfield. They've got to get that ball into at least where he's got a shot, like a 50-yarder. Well, that, that would be at the 35-yard yeah. line, then. You're talking 17 yards added to the line of scrimmage. If you make it to the 30, it's a 47-yard yeah. kick. The ball's on the 35. That's about as far as I think they can hope, because he is kicking into the wind, too. Yes. But with no timeouts remaining, they're going to have to do exactly what you say. It's kind of yeah. like Keystone Cops, but it, boy, I, it can, they are coached and prepared to, to execute. Now, I don't know how much time you need you usually figure you want to hold a, about 12 seconds. I don't know if they can get a ball that far downfield and have 12 seconds left. Well, you almost have to think of a big bend play right now, too. You got to think that way. Penalty. Yeah. Of course, now it's not like in the NFL where it's a spot foul. The yeah. most it could be is 15 yards. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. But what I mean by that is I don't know if you can even reasonably think you can get this play called and get this guy on the field without a timeout. That's a major question, I'm sure, right now for Hayden Fry. Remember now, he missed the last attempt from 51 yards in the beginning of the fourth quarter. Well, the series had had three ties before. And Hartley, here we go. Second down, four. Well, run it. Take it off. He's going to have to get out of bounds. At the 46 and stops the clock with seven seconds. All right, now it's Big Ben. They have no choice. Yep. Boy, if he hadn't gotten out of bounds, though, it was all over. Yeah. I don't know if they could even gotten the ball snapped in time. Took it. 
It took him eight seconds as you take a look at this. He's in the shotgun snap. Good snap. Good protection up front. You can see the protection moving over to the, the left of your screen. There's a hole right up inside. Now he breaks. And no, he's not the scrambling type of guy, but he knows what he has to do. Good presence of mind. He is heading for the sideline. Takes him a little while to get there. <laughs> but you know, it just shows you the determination he had yeah. there. I mean, he was not going to go down. Yeah. So here we go. Seven seconds left. It is a first down. The line of scrimmage of 46 from the shotgun. They sent everybody out. Throw it. He's got to do it. The time has expired. He throws. Cook is down there. Incomplete. And we end up in a tie. Look at Chuck. He can't believe it wasn't complete. Well, they had a crack at it. That ball was up for grabs. Cook was down there, but he had two men around him. Veda Murray was the guy that looked like he got a hand on it. Twenty-seven. Also over there, defending on the play, was Rick Hassel and an extra defensive back. There is Messner and Hartley, two of the outstanding seniors in the Big Ten. Well, the Chevrolet players of the game, Chuck Hartley. 263 yards and a touchdown for Iowa. And Tony Bowles, 22 carries, 148 yards.